Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is a story about what if neglected female Sasu kidnaps Naruto. Before I start, please support for more amazing content and do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This is written by Gataha Vekuubi and link in the description and support writer. Let's start the video. Chapter 1. A Moron and an Asshole. The boy walked down the street, eyes pressed forward. Glares, hate, frustration, all directed at him. However, as if he were protected in armor, their emotions simply bounced off of him, leaving him alone with his empty thoughts. Whispers, eyes, rage. None of it processed in the back of his mind, and once more, he lived in his carefree world where there was nothing wrong, ever. For some, that made them give up their pointless crusade, while others, it simply enforced their planned course. Continuing on his walk, his own frustration began to boil. Through the streets alone to his thoughts, a murmur and a whisper caught his attention. He made a pensive glance toward his right. Sasuke stood alone, staring off into the distance as someone bothered him with questions and concerns. A group of girls squealing and praising his every step. However, there was something in that look that reminded Naruto of something. Emptiness. Flashback. If there were things that annoyed him to no end, it was the fact everything he did either failed or backfired. Oh, but there were golden moments where his luck truly told him to go suck a fat one and did both in such a spectacularly stupid way. It didn't help that the one who caused most of his frustration was that annoying asshole, Ichiha Sasuke. Even before his entire clan was murdered, he was a bit of a head. The truest form. They clashed under Ruka's declaration. A bout of fists, but the instant Naruto blinked, his back was to the ground with Sasuke on top of him, his fist ready to pound into his face. The look in the Ichiha's eyes was something different. He wasn't new to hatred and disgust, but the expression on Sasuke's face was something else entirely. It was as if he truly saw him as nothing more than trash and believed it too. The dark look, the empty onyx eyes, there wasn't even any anger it was pure darkness. Naruto froze under the Ichiha's gaze. It was the same look he wore when he was alone. It was the same empty gaze that looked back at him whenever he saw his reflection. Sasuke was just like him. Shaking out of his reverie, Naruto gulped as the boy got off of him, huffing and patting his clothes down. There was something off about the boy that Naruto couldn't pinpoint, but it was there. The job, Sasuke. Hiroka nodded. Naruto, maybe next time don't rush in without a plan. Naruto glared at Sasuke, raising a fist. Hey, bastard. Sasuke bit the bait. What, loser. From this day forward, you're my rival. Got it. A rival implies equal footing. Sasuke glared menacingly. You're far from being my equal. We'll see. There was a flicker in Sasuke's eyes. A gleam that flashed in his onyx eyes. Was it pride? Was it excitement? Naruto couldn't tell. Blinking at the boy's fighting smirk, condescending or not, it was enough of a smirk. Sasuke made his usual grunt and turned away, shuffling by as his sandals dragged against the training ground. Naruto, you have no right to challenge Sasuke. The horde of fangirls bellowed from the sidelines. You're nothing compared to him. Rolling his eyes, Naruto sighed, watching as Sasuke walked away, hands in his pockets, head held low. To everyone else, it looked like cocky apathy, to him, he knew better. The weight that rested on Sasuke's shoulders, the pain that he must be wrestling with Naruto, knew that walk too well. Turning away to stand back in line, he took a deep breath, sighing to the sky. Sasuke who are you? What made a place home? Sasuke wondered that. Staring off into the river as often as he did, it left him to wander through the entropy of his damaged mind. Trapped between a rock and a hard place, there were few options for him, and none of them were to his liking. It disgusted him. The child, with nothing but foolish childish dreams, dashed in the blood of those he called family, by the one he loved the most. The fangirls had vanished, pulled away by their parents. It was always a mixture, some of those adults looked at him with disdain, others with such a profound pity, it made him sick to his stomach. He was not someone to be pitied. He was not someone who wanted empathy. He was not going to be seen as some poor helpless girl. He stopped himself. A frown gracing his usually stoic face. Hands raised, he lowered his forehead into his open hands. Chakra imbalance shifted and hummed at the back of his neck. A glow, unseen between the follicles of raven hair. As the last of the fangirls vanished into the distance, he shot up, dashing up the stairwell toward the main street. If it weren't for his panicked state, he would have noticed a blonde boy walking by. It was sundown. The village hidden in the leaves was beginning to fall to sleep. Shinobi patrolled the streets and rooftops as civilians cradled one another in their shitty little hovels and rising tenement buildings. Businesses in the distance were open, bars and taverns filled with music and drunken singing. People laughed, families played, but he was alone. In a dark, poorly lit section of the village, there was a tenement building, well-maintained, but a far cry from the pristine and cultured corridors of the clan compounds. 
Despite being the last surviving member of his clan, he was among the refuse, hiding in plain sight, alone in a room too big for himself. Taking a deep breath, he removed his shirt, tossing it aside, revealing bandages and binding tape. A seal on the back his neck began to glow, humming with life before poof, his duck butt hair extended further, still keeping the spikes, falling to his mid-back. His face was leaner, with fairer attributes. He was not a boy. Rather, her name was Satsuki. With a growl, she removed the bindings, releasing her chest from its prison. With a frustrated growl, she slammed her forehead forward, smashing into the mirror. She cursed under her breath, the pain in her back, the pain from the bindings, worse yet, the pain from the seal on the back of her neck, it all came to her with the force of a tidal wave. Head pressed to the shards of glass, her reflection was splintered, painted in the crimson glow seeping between the cracks. Hate me, little sister. Return to me when you have the same eyes. Hate me. Satsuki clenched her teeth. Fists bowling against the sink, she pulled back, clenching the sink for dear life. Alone in the village, she didn't know what to do. Eyes watched her every move, she could even hear the whispers in the back of her mind. He's the sole survivor. Don't look his way. Ichiha can't be trusted. Ichiha. 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 She glared once more. Frustration. Rage. Hate. However, that glare softened. There was a cry in the back of her head that made her both want to puke and smile. It was annoying, but in a weird endearing kind of way. If that made any sense. His whisker marks fading in and out of her reverie. That frustrated frown began to turn, curling into a soft, almost wistful smile. She shook her head. His words, his loud mud declaration echoed in her heart. You are my rival. She chuckled. Eyes scanning the blood of the mirror, her eyes glimmered with tears. Words and questions rushing, her hands clutched her chest, pressing against her heavily beating heart. Why am I like this? Naruto awoke. Stomach grumbling, skin sweating and arm hairs rising. Slowly, he got out of bed, sliding from the bed sheets and slipping into sandals. He made the pensive walk from his bed to the bathroom. Staring at his reflection, there was a moment that he caught the dullness of his cerulean eyes. As if the light was killed, leaving nothing but the turmoil that collided and clashed within his soul. He remembered the old man Hokage talking about windows to the soul, how the eyes reflect the true intent of the person. The darkness that fumbled and festered within those darker eyes made him question what kind of person he really was. Head held low, he brushed his teeth, washed his face and stretched. A sigh escaping his lips, his gaze turned to the rinky dink, cracked and peeling ceiling above him. A flicker of a light, flashing between light and dark. He frowned, going through the motions once again. Shuffling through his apartment, he opened the door and headed to the kitchen. Rummaging through the cupboards and pantry, in practiced monotony, he poured boiling hot water into his newfound cup of instant ramen. Not a single thought went through his mind as he sat down, chopsticks in one hand, boiling cup in the other. I did Akimasu. He whispered in his mind. Snapping the chopsticks in two, he dug into his ramen, slurping away. It surprised him, stopping for a moment. He was already drinking the broth. Something really must be getting to him. Shaking his head, he returned to his meal. This day was the day. It would be the day he would become a genin. It was the day that he began his journey to becoming Hokage. Taking a deep breath, he was ready. Why do I feel like I'm not? As the last of his breakfast sunk down into his stomach, he got up, rushing to the academy. Glares, whispers, frustration. More of the same. It was as if the annoyance of the villagers had reached a fever pitch. Heh. Soon. I'll show all of you who I am. You'll remember that my name is Yuzumaki Naruto. Not Demon. In his rush, he wasn't paying attention. Tsutsuki went through her morning routine. Wrapping binding tape and bandages around her chest was becoming more and more tiresome for her liking. The seal tickling at the back of her neck was beginning to wane. If it lost power, everyone would know. Everyone would see the true Chia Sasuke. Scowling as the pressure built against her bones, she stopped. Staring at the cracked mirror in the bathroom, she clenched her teeth. She couldn't keep lying to everyone, nor herself, for that matter. Even when she was a child, she hid her appearance, she tried to be the honorable second son of Ichiha Fugaku and Makoto, at no one's behest but her own. She tried to be like her brother, Itachi, but none of that mattered in the end. She fashioned herself as a boy, thinking that men were better ninja, naively assuming that if she were a boy, she'd be respected more none of that was true. In fact, in the end it was more of the same. Hidden whispers of people who thought were unheard, glances sent her way of prying eyes who didn't deserve to know her thoughts, worse yet, fangirls who assumed too much. Itcha. 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 Satsuki shot her eyes to the ceiling. Hiding. 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 She was always hiding. She hid from her brother, she hid from the massacre until it was too late, she hides from herself. Too long she had gone through the routine, too long she had bothered with this sham. But the sigh, the blush of frustration began to subside. 
With all the bindings and the bandages tightened, tied and latched, she was ready to don her mask. She slipped into Sasuke's clothes, the seal on the back of her neck, hidden by her raven hair, was suddenly activated. There was a sputter, as if it choked on her chakra. A gasp, a hiss, she turned in panic, turning her body to the mirror. Cursing under her breath, she realized the seal was already beginning to fade. One small line in the calligraphy could make the biggest difference. A shame she didn't know what it was. It was too late and she couldn't just go to the hokage and ask for a quick fix. She was about to graduate from the academy. Doing what felt natural, she poured chakra into the seal. Slowly, it hummed to life, shifting her appearance. As the seal stopped its melodic music and the chakra was no longer siphoned, she looked back at her reflection. The boy with angry eyes and duck butt hair stared back at her. Just a little longer. I'll be a genin, train and become a chunin, work my ass off and become a genin. I won't have to hide who I am anymore. Hokage Sama will fix the records and it'll be as if I was always who I really was. Satsuki thought to herself. With pride, she rummaged through her fridge, pulling out some cherry tomatoes, snacking on them as she curled some weights. Thoughts meandering through the menagerie of her head, they all fell back to the one goal she fashioned. Hokage Sama said that he would let me train to find my brother if I just promise him to do it right. He said he would give me the resources, the information, the teachers, everything I could possibly want all I have to do is do everything the right way. I just wish I just wish I was more like him. She walked through the streets, seal humming silently, keeping her appearance maintained. Hands in her pockets, no one bothered to strike conversation. In the distance, a pair of girls were shouting, one with pink hair and the other with blonde. They were murmuring about something, and she was mortified at the prospect. Usually, their conversations were about him. Tsutsuki shook her head, beating a hasty retreat toward the academy, careful not to blow her cover. However, in her fear, she wasn't looking where she was going. What the fuck is your deal, loser? Hold up, asshole, you were the one who ran into me. Get out of my way. Nah, Naruto pushed back. Sasuke, for a moment, was shocked at his aggression. Snapping back at him, Naruto's eyes flickered. A flash of water splashing upon his cerulean eyes. Hitting the ground, people stopped what they were doing, focusing on the two of them. Naruto, for all of his tact, shot back up to his feet, pushing Sasuke back, knocking him to the ground, you're the one who ran into me. I'm not getting out of the way until you apologize. Sasuke patted his clothes, focusing his glare, I know you didn't just do that. I did. Want to see me do it again, jerk. As Sasuke stood up, his mood was beginning to drop at an exponential rate. But, for a moment, he watched the glares and stares from the villagers around them. On rooftops, there was Anbu watching from a distance, so concealed, he almost missed it. Judging by Naruto's tamed expression, he noticed them too. However, Sasuke shot that thought down. There was no way the Yuzumaki was that spatially aware. He faltered in his stance for a split second. People were nearing, people were speaking, people were raising their hands. Moron. Sasuke glared. Fine, I'm. I'm sorry, alright. Naruto leveled his own glare. A flicker of fear in his eyes silenced Sasuke once more. Sasuke's mouth dropped. What? Naruto smirked, trying to ease the mood. H.N. Sasuke shoved his hands in his pocket, bumping his shoulder past Naruto, shoving him aside. Giving the boy a glance, he smirked back. What? Are you gonna keep standing there like a moron, or are you going come and fail this graduation test? Naruto, for all his courage and meathead tendencies, face faulted. You little bastard. H.N. You're shorter than me, loser. Naruto sat against the swing, something that had become somewhat of a tradition as of late. More often than not, when parents came to grab their little crotch goblins, he sat there, waiting, patiently, sorrowfully, even, forehead pressed to the ropes dangling so dangerously. Hands clutching the chaffing binds, he heard them. The whispers. Endlessly playing in the back of his mind, cursing, yammering on about his failures. They would not stop. In the corner of it all, he watched as Sasuke was doing the same, however, donning the hit aid of Kanoha. His face reflected his own, the empty glare, arms crossed over his chest. Sasuke was many things, but this was the first time Naruto had ever seen him look vulnerable. Mizuki was close to Sasuke, congratulating the child, but remained a little too close for Naruto's tastes. The man was a teacher, yet for some reason, he was almost leering at the Achiha. I can already hear the conversation. Oh, Sasuke, you and the Achiha are so great. Naruto gagged at the words. Hmm. I gotta say though, Sasuke looks a little off. His jaw looks slimmer. I don't know, it might be the light and the angle or something. I dunno. Naruto kept to himself, blue eyes suddenly locking with onyx. There was an unspoken understanding, uncomfortable, afraid. But Naruto broke his gaze, looking down at the patches of grass and the roots peering through the topsoil. He could feel everything pressed against him, but for some reason, Sasuke's gaze pierced harder than everyone else's. 
he could feel his eyes hyper-focusing on his small form, almost making him shrink even further into the swing. He noticed a shift in demeanor. Sasuke was speaking to Mizuki, thanking him, if his lips were any indication. This time, there was something definitely off about Sasuke. His lips were thicker, slightly fuller than ever before. Listen, he may have taken a glance once or twice to see what Sakura and the others were raving about this was different. Rubbing his eyes, Naruto could swear Sasuke's eyelashes were longer. Shaking his head, Mizuki left, giving a bow to Sasuke. The Chunin turned on his heels and started his trek toward him. Boy, Naruto. Mizuki called with a somber smile. How are you? I know I know you must be devastated right now. I Naruto frowned. What can I say? Another test failed, time to redo everything again, right? Naruto, listen. You are talented and strong. I mean, you pulled off everything else without a hitch. It's just the bunshin. You know I have too much chakra for it. There's no way I can pass until I perfect my chakra control. What if I told you there was another way to graduate? Demon. Monster. Creature. It all made sense. It all finally made sense. Naruto pressed his back against the tree, tears streaming down his face. Scroll clutched to his chest, the boy was in full panic. Mizuki was in the back, screaming at the top of his lungs, insults, lies. He wasn't a demon, he couldn't be. Hands gripping the scroll for dear life, he refused to let Mizuki get his hands on it. Iruka was back there, pinned against his own comrade. Delirious laughter, baseless accusations, Naruto couldn't take it anymore. Blinded by tears, he stood, using the tree as a crutch. He stumbled, mumbling incoherent words, he was ready to give up the scroll, ready to be killed by his former teacher. The man was right, he was a demon. He was a creature. He was everything he had ever heard. He was nothing. A being less than dirt. A monster. The acts he had done in his life rushed back to him. The unyielding hate everyone displayed for him, smashing into his mind. The curses, the things thrown at him, the denials, the lies. Heart racing, Naruto cursed wildly, realizing in an instant of vivid clarity, everything was a goddamn lie. A lie. Lies. 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 You're right. Iruka's words came like a hammer, smashing against Naruto's chest. He paused, scroll slipping from his grip. You'd be right if he was the demon fox. Iruka chuckled weakly. But Naruto is different. I know that he is an exceptional student. He works very hard, and he's single-minded and clumsy at the same time. No one accepts him, but he knows the meaning of human suffering. He is not the demon fox he's Yuzumaki Naruto, citizen of Konoha. Whatever Mizuki said ran into one ear and out the other. Without thinking, he rushed from the tree roots he hid. Scroll held under one arm, he rushed at Mizuki. Head tilted down, his head crashed against Mizuki, sending his shuriken flying into the woods and himself, toppling over his limp limbs and legs. Rolling about the dirt and stone, he crashed against a tree. You fucking freak. Mizuki bellowed deliriously. You caught me off guard next time you want. If you touch Aruka sensei one more time I'll kill you. Bring it one, monster. Show me what you can do fox. Tsutsuki cursed, ripping the binding and bandages from her body. Running a hand through her hair, she struggled to take in breath. The looks Mizuki was giving her, it was as if he knew her secret. Shivering within the confines of her own bathroom, there was a feeling that she was being watched. It was real, as if the person stood behind her. Leering, inching ever closer, the sweaty, greasy palms, ready to grab her bare shoulder and throw her to the ground. The last Ichiha in the village, a woman at that. The thoughts whirled in her head. At lightning speeds, her eyes snapped shut, arms and hands rushing to her chest. She curled, shielding what was left of her bare skin from sight. However, there was no one else in the apartment but herself. Winds blew against wind chimes hanging from her balcony, to the wisps of smoke drifting from the burning incense. As the tears began to form, she hid her face within her open palms, trying to hide from the stairs. Hide from the whispers. She cringed, muscles tightening, legs brought up to her chest, she wept on the cold bathroom floor. The fire that once burned righteously in her heart began to douse. Weaker, it flickered. Hate me. Hate me, little sister. Return to me when you have the same eyes. Hate. 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 Her brows furrowed, reigniting that flame. Roaring through her body, she relaxed. Her muscles no longer locking up, she turned, skin kissing the stone cold floor. Turning about, she forced herself to stand, despite the weight pressing down on her. Eyes. Whispers. Fear. Running a hand through her sweat-slicked hair, she stumbled to her feet, falling back into the wall behind her. Sliding to the floor, she took slow, deep breaths. Satsuki gulped, sniffling, wiping the tears from her face. The words of her father echoing in her head. Well I do not agree with this idea of transforming your appearance, even with your mother's convincing if this is what you believe will earn you strength, then prove it. 
You can change how you look, but you can never change the blood that flows in your veins. You are an Achiha, Satsuki, or Sasuke, it doesn't matter. If you want to be strong like your brother Itachi, only through blood, sweat and tears, will you be strong. Satsuki smacked her lips, staring at the cracked mirror. I was always a girl. I was always a Chia Satsuki. I just wanted to be looked at the same way people looked at Itachi. How many Kanoichi fight like he can? How many Kanoichi are treated as well as any male shinobi is? How many Kanoichi do anything more than Jinjutsu and medical ninjutsu? How many are more than support? How many can go toe to toe without being brought down and insulted for just being women? As a boy I never received hate, discrimination, nor did I ever receive pointless remarks. I was just someone who did as what was expected of them. I was someone who was praised and never bothered. As a girl, as the last surviving and last loyal of one of the noble clans of this village, what the fuck does everyone expect? I imagine the same would have been done to the Hayuga if Inada or her sister were the last surviving members. Jutsu Keke Genkai are prized and coveted by every ninja village. I wouldn't doubt, as far as I can throw myself, that other villages have their own and would absolutely kill to have another. I mean didn't Hinata get kidnapped by the hidden cloud? I remember my father saying something about that one day with mother. I would be experimented on, I would be used and treated as nothing more than an object if I were a dainty little Kinoichi. These other girls are so beneath me, so painfully average they can go off and become ninja and die in some forgotten field for all I care. I wouldn't doubt if that really happened, honestly. The only girls that really stand any hell of a chance would be Ino and Hinata, and that's because they come from illustrious clans. Everyone else. Gods help those poor bitches. I know who I am and I know what I am going to do. I'm going to kill Itachi. I'm going to avenge my clan. I'm going to restore my clan on my own terms. However do any of them know what they're going to do. Day in and day out, they cared more about Sasuke than they did really learning about history, combat tactics and ninjutsu. Many only did the bare minimum. Seeing how insane most of them are and their herd mentality, they would flock and ravage the first person who dares ruin their little bubble world. So, I became Sasuke. I became a boy to avoid being in their annoying little gaze, but that didn't work when my skills far outshined literally everyone else. Father wanted me to prove that I can be strong, boy or girl, and I did that. Now look at me my seal is breaking. I need to talk to the Hokage as soon as I can and get this damn thing fixed. The way Mizuki looked at me. The way he was getting closer and closer if it weren't for Naruto looking so pathetic, I think he might have tried something worse. I didn't even realize how bad it was getting until I got home. The damn seal had faltered so badly, I was looking more and more feminine as the seconds passed. No one can know yet. No one. I'm not ready. I can't defend myself yet. I need I need time. Her eyes were swollen and bloodshot, but at least her heart had finally calmed down. Pushing off the floor, she stumbled into her living room, fumbling through into her bedroom. Hands drifted through her closet until her fingers brushed against a silk kimono. Sliding her arms through it, she tied the sash and fell to bed. Hate me, little sister. Tears began to fall once more. I can't. Naruto walked into the classroom, chest beating like a drumroll. For a second he blinked, he was actually nervous. Five bowls of ramen and a good drink of water and normally that would get him going for an entire day, however, that confidence and joy waned with very step he took toward that door. People were in there, talking and laughing and joking like old friends. He knew the second he stepped foot in there, all their attention would fall on him. That was something he really didn't want to deal with. Beating Mizuki within an inch of his life was a life-changing experience. Haruka giving him his hit I ate, even better. All of that joy, the first actual night of dreamless sleep he had ever received, vanished as the door slid open. Taking a deep breath, his smile began to form, stretching from ear to ear, flashing the metal plate of his hit I ate. Conversation stopped at the drop of a dime. Eyes turned to him as he played the oblivious card. Waltzing into the room, with his hands clasped behind his head, he walked to his seat, whistling with the cheesiest shit-eating grin he had ever worn in his life. Taking a seat beside Sasuke, as he had no choice for the last four years, he tried to mind his own business. But that glance that Sasuke was shooting his way was beginning to annoy him. What? Naruto asked. I thought graduating students were allowed in here. Sasuke said in his usual monotone voice. You see this hit I ate, asshole. It means I'm a ninja too. That doesn't mean anything, loser. Sasuke glared. I don't know how you got it, and honestly, I couldn't care less. You are not a ninja. Before he could respond, Naruto was in front of him, squatted with a glare marring his whiskered face. Sasuke glared back, keeping his composure. The Uzumaki scowled, wanna say that again, asshole. A hit I ate doesn't make a ninja, loser. Sasuke pushed, focusing his glare. 
To his annoyance, fangirls had joined, Sakura and Ino, the loudest of the whole pack, were screaming at Naruto, bellowing as if their throats would never go hoarse. Come on. Not now. W what? Naruto turned to them. S Sakura-chan I just. Stop blaring at Sasuke-kun this instant. She screamed, fists raised, ready to swing. Naruto however, ignored her request and returned to their stare down. Words and curses flying between their simple gaze, crashing and clashing like the song of blades in the midst of a great battlefield. They were unbroken, neither willing to budge. This wasn't like graduation day when they crashed into each other, this was their pride and egos under question. Closer they got to one another, the tips of their noses beginning to touch. Naruto panicked, they were too close. Sasuke was beginning to pull back, the red of his cheeks beginning to form. They could feel each other's breath dancing against their upper lips. Satsuki cringed, she was still a boy to everyone else. As luck would have it, someone wasn't paying attention. Closer, Naruto began to close the distance, eyes widening by the second. Their lips crashed into one another. What the fuck? This fucking moron. All sound sucked from the room. It was so quiet, a pin drop would sound like an explosive tag. Immediately pulling away, Naruto and Sasuke gagged and choked, spitting wildly across the room. Neither wanted to say anything, neither wanted to speak of it ever again. Naruto couldn't believe what had just happened, and Satsuki wanted to disappear. Screams, screeches, faints. People watched with complete horror as the dead last, and the best student in the class fell to the floor, as if they had been poisoned. Fangirls gathered, fists and knuckles cracking. Naruto, tears in his poor eyes, looked at them with pleading tears. Please, don't hurt me too bad. Everyone, take your seats. The debt is paid. Naruto sighed with relief. I saved him he saved me. I cannot believe that just happened. Satsuki cursed within her mind. Wiping her face on her arm warmers for good measure, Sasuke took his seat once again, fighting the reddening of his cheeks. She wanted to slap herself, kick herself or something, just to forget that this moment ever happened. Her first kiss, stolen by the stupidest, most idiotic person she had ever met. Thankfully, Naruto was in the same boat. He could not fathom his bad luck. His first kiss, stolen, by an asshole, a boy no less. Shaking his head, he took his seat, hands running through his hair. Tsutsuki watched him from the corner of her eye, narrowing with fury. I get it. Everyone thinks I'm a guy, but you can't think it was that bad. I know his opinion shouldn't matter, but damn it does that annoy me. Anyway Ruka tapped the chalkboard behind him. It has been an incredible journey and an incredible honor to have been your teacher in your first steps to become shinobi. I am beyond proud of each and every single one of you, and I know that you will do incredible things in the future. As a final farewell before I give your team assignments, I just want you to know that I, along with everyone in Kanoha, believes in you. A bell test. A stupid bell test that, in the end, was a goddamn lie. Tsutsuki cut a kunai through the binding tape and bandages with a frustrated growl. Throwing the offending linen away, she rested against the sink of her bathroom, head inches away from the cracks blackened with dried blood. Her reflection remained shattered in this hole of solitude. A reflection that rung true to her aching chest. Hands ran across her skin, wincing at the bruises her new sensei had inflicted. She swore he broke a rib or something. In the end, it was about teamwork. Biting her lip, just as she bit the bullet to feed Naruto on the training grounds, she sighed. The Hokage's words ringing in her head. If she wanted to find and kill her brother, if she wanted to achieve any of her goals, she needed to do it the right way. She needed to be a friend to her new comrades. She needed to be more than a Chiha Sasuke, Avenger, she needed to be a Chiha Satsuki, loyal Chia. Clutching the edges of her sink, she took a deep breath, sighing into herself. The frustrations, the anger, the annoyance of Sakura and Naruto, multiplying in the back of her head, it was almost too much. As stupid as the whole situation was, the Hokage was right. Itachi was strong, if he managed to kill the entire clan in a single night. No one in their right mind would think going against him alone would be the right choice of action. And she wasn't the highest marked student for nothing. The Hokage would give her a squad, teachers, equipment, information. All she needed to do was play along until she was Chunin, she needed to keep the illusion going for just a few more months. She had everything planned out. Training regimens, strict bedtime and meditation, she would do all she could to remain in the good graces of the Hokage. She could not risk losing her one chance to defeat her brother. However, as the intrusive thoughts began to trickle into the recesses of her tired adolescent mind, she stopped. Hands beginning to tremble, arms shaking in their sockets. Itachi stared at her in the mirror, his calm smile, and the brotherly gaze he always gave her before poking her forehead. Hate me. She clenched her teeth, snapping her eyes shut. Hate me, little sister. The red sky and white and black monochrome of Tsukiyomi blaring in the void of her eyelids. Hate me. She shook her head. Her thoughts took over. 
Screaming incoherent words, she punched the porcelain sink, spilling blood across the white surface. Shouting and crying out to no one, she slammed her fists into the mirror, shattering what was left, completely. Glass embedded between her knuckles, she gasped out, falling back into the cold hard tile walls of her bathroom. Heart racing at speeds unfelt before, her legs sprawled out in front of her, spent and weaker than she had ever felt in her life. I see can't. Her hands rushed to her head, screaming agonizing pain as her fingers bent and extended, running through the sweat-slicked follicles of raven hair. I can't do it. I can't hate you. I can't hate anyone. Return to me when we have the same eyes. I can't do it. A thud was heard in the apartment, snapping her from her tears. Hands trembling, dripping with blood, she snapped to her feet, throwing on the shirt of Sasuke. Forcing Chakra into the seal on the nape of her neck, she froze mid-step. It was no longer responding. Panic, fear, terror. It began to envelope her, rising up to drown her in its grasp. Carefully, she reached down grabbing a wad of toilet paper and wrapping around a glass shard, slightly larger than a kunai. Careful not draw more of her own blood, she readied herself as she opened the door. Someone was in her apartment. Someone must have heard her delirium. Someone had finally decided to show themselves. Springing into action, she charged for where the sound had come from. Her window was open, wind drifting against the curtains dangling carefree. She snapped, feeling a presence behind her. Hand out, she grabbed fabric and slammed the weight against a wall, glass shard inches away from whoever's face it was. Onyx's eyes met cerulean blue. Ben Naruto. A Sasuke. W what the fuck are you doing here? Why your girl? Chapter 2. You're a moron. There were many moments in his life where he wondered if he ever made the right decision. Walking into places he knew didn't like him, or going to areas of the village that had a distinct hatred for him, this however, crossed so many lines that he didn't even know he had drawn. All he wanted was to prank Sasuke, all he wanted to was do some stupid shit to maybe hurt the Ichiha's ego, even if it was for a split second. Catch him unaware, tie him up, maybe sit on him for good measure, but for sure, it wasn't this. I Naruto panicked, unable to find the words. I. Satsuki had a moment of silence, unable to look away from the boy who broke into her apartment. Blade of shattered glaze pressed against his throat, blood began to trickle down his neck. Her rage and fury rising with each passing second, she pressed the blade further into flesh, painting the reflection of his quivering eyes crimson with his own blood. However, something stopped her, refusing to flick her wrist, she pulled back, dropping the shard. As it clattered on the wooden floorboards, she backed away, dropping the boy from her deathly grip. Before Naruto could open his mouth again, her foot smashed into his chest. He sputtered, eyes as wide as plates. He swore a rib or two broke from her strength. Falling to the floor, Satsuki was over him once again, glass shard in her hand, ready to end his life in an instant. Her eyes were filled with anger, fury, rage, but there was something else in there that Naruto could barely believe. Fear. As the blade of glass neared his throat once again, there was something else in her eyes. Hesitation. Oh look, even though I think it's totally deserved, please don't kill me yet. Tsutsuki didn't say a word, keeping her glare leveled at the blonde idiot trapped in her deathly grip. The blade of glass inching deeper and deeper. He was certain if he agitated her any further, she might actually cut something important. While he didn't really understand the human body enough, he saw what Mizuki had done to Aruka, and that was just the man's back. As she pulled the glass back, tossing it away as if it burned to the touch. Once more, as Naruto opened his mouth to speak, she shot her hands forward, slamming her palms against his mouth. Her breaths were shaking, her body was trembling, eyes jumping wildly between him and the knife. You. Naruto didn't know what to do. Trapped between a rock and hard place, he could do nothing but stay still. The threat of death was too real. It was as if he had stepped into a snake pit, surrounded on all sides by fangs dripping with venom. Somehow, she was even stronger than the Sasuke knew. Hands calloused and scratched with cuts and bruises. Pressing down, the wood of her walls began to creak and snap. No one was supposed to know. She said with an empty tone. Not yet. No one. W what do you mean? Naruto asked, his voice muffled. No one was supposed to know that I am actually a girl. She said once more, as dead as before. B but why? She shot her elbow out, knocking Naruto to the floor. Hands rushing to his bruising head, he cried out, trying to crawl back to the window. As he neared however, her hands grabbed his ankles and pulled him back into the living room. Fists raised, her eyes were no longer filled with anger. The onyx orbs quaked with unabated terror. She prepared to punch, but a shivering fist stopped her mid-swing. Naruto however did nothing, laying there beneath her ire. Of all the stupid things he had done, this had to take the cake in every way imaginable. She had every right to beat him to death. She didn't. She sat there, straddling his chest, fist raised, another gripping the collar of his orange jumpsuit. Neither said a word, as if they were trapped in limbo of what to do next. 
you a Sasuke? Naruto asked, preparing his wince. If you're not going to kill me can you explain to me what the hell is going on? Tsutsuki took a deep breath, trying to calm down. You're big on keeping your word, right? Huh? Answer the question, moron. You uh, yeah, as sure. Then swear to me, on your own words, that you will not tell a fucking soul about this unless I say so. Satsuki grabbed his collar with both hands, raising him to face level. Do you understand me I want to hear you promise it. If you don't then I can just kill you right here, right now. I promise. Naruto said, paling at a threat. I swear I want. Get off my floor and take a seat, then Satsuki stood up and slammed her window shut. Pulling the curtains, no one would see inside. Turning to the Yuzumaki, the boy was slowly getting off the floor, clutching his chest releasing a few hisses as he did. He stumbled to his feet, wiping blood from his split lips. A pang resounded in her chest, watching his dejected form fall into her couch, breathless and in agonizing pain. Then no Naruto waved a hand. I, I get it. I honestly of all the things that I thought would happen today, this was the absolute last thing I would have ever imagined. I'm surprised you're not killing me right now. Still on the fence about that one, moron. Satsuki frowned, taking a pensive seat in front of him. My name isn't Sasuke Satsuki. I am the daughter of Ichiha Fugaku and Makoto. I was born a girl and through some circumstances, I had decided to use Fuinjutsu to change my gender, so people would leave me alone and treat me like anyone else. Obviously, that came with some drawbacks and somewhat backfired on me. What you are seeing is the real me. It's nice to know the real you isn't so much of an asshole. I can be an asshole if it makes you feel better, idiot. Satsuki spat. Say what you will, but this was a precaution. Ichiha were feared by the people of the village as they were the police. No one likes the police. I think you've had some run-ins with the Anbu and Shinobi who patrol the streets. Not exactly the nicest of professions. Worse yet, are Keke Genkai. With the Ichiha gone, except for myself and my brother, Kanoha has lost one of its most powerful weapons. Naruto weakly turned to her, a new pain rumbling within his body. W what do you mean? We're ninja, Naruto. We're literally training to be killers. The bloodline that my family has had was coveted by people across the shinobi nations. It wouldn't take a genius to figure out what would happen to a Kinoichi who had such powers. Experimentation, treated like an object, every shitty little thing you can imagine that the shinobi world has to offer, there's someone out there who sees other people as nothing more than something to study, something to examine, something. I Naruto frowned. I'm sorry. I don't want pity. Satsuki slammed her fist into her coffee table. I'm not telling you this for you to feel sorry about me. That is the last thing I want or need. W what I want what I've always wanted was to be myself. It was to be respected and adored like my older brother, but all I am to people is a name. A bloodline. A fucking thing to gain. Even as a boy, even as Sasuke, all these people see as a boy with incredible talent and handsome features, they don't even see him as a person, what makes you think they'd see me as a person? Springing from her seat, she paced. Hands crushed together, she winced at the cuts and bruises springing across her knuckles. None of you even know that I read, or that I can do archery, or my favorite food. All I am, even to you, was a goal, something to surpass, something to tiptoe around, a goddamn pedestal. No one knows me, no one even bothered to ask. Naruto mumbled something incoherent. If you have something to say, loser, just spit it out already. Sheepish, he sat up, clutching his stomach. So uh what is your favorite food? Tsutsuki, for all her bravado, had to take a step back. Shaking in her clothes, she rubbed her eyes. The sheer audacity. This boy breaks into her home, seeing her in her most vulnerable state, gets the dog shit beaten out of him and nearly killed, then, after all of that, asks the most profoundly ridiculous question one could ask in a situation like this. Dumbfounded, she blinked. The careful step was taken, inching closer to the seat she once occupied. Shaking her head from the whiplash, she blinked once again. I love cherry tomatoes and fish. Naruto rubbed the back of his head, fish. That's not very specific. I like seafood, dumbass. Satsuki rolled her eyes. Mackerel, tilapia, pompano, tuna. Naruto rolled his eyes back. I know what fish are, asshole. Satsuki's frown, however, remained. You're taking all of this information surprisingly well. It was his turn to get flustered. You uh, I may have had a slight suspicion for a while now. But I didn't have any proof nor did I have any real foundation. Okay. Satsuki leaned back into her seat, crossing a leg over the other, as she did with her arms. Spill. Azuki, the bastard was leaned up on you after graduation. There were some things off about your face. Naruto said. You I am not that I watch you or anything. Swear. It was just your real lips were showing, I guess. Eyelashes were longer, hair was slightly longer, your figure within your shirt was showing as the winds blew past you, your jawline was slimmer. 
I was weird and I thought I was seeing things. It just made everything even weirder when Mizuki wouldn't leave you alone. Speaking of Mizuki, what happened to him? Tsutsuki spied the red tinge on Naruto's cheeks, the twiddling of his thumbs. Clear indications that he was hiding something. Tilting her head, she watched him fumble with his jumpsuit cuffs. As if a practiced response, his hand ran to the back of his head, rubbing nervously. H honestly, no clue. He. She was unconvinced. Raising a brow, she narrowed her eyes at him, trying to get a red on the orange wearing idiot. There was something about what he said that had merit. Satsuki was so uncomfortable with Mizuki so close by. Something about him just exuded the worst or imaginable. He leered, his eyes going everywhere but her own, her personal space invaded as if he were familiar with her. It made her stomach twist. She was a child, the final help of a clan or not. Looking at Naruto, he maintained that stupid smile. He was lying. I was forced to spill the greatest secret anyone could ever possibly have, Satsuki glared, and you don't have the heart to tell me yours. That doesn't seem fair, don't you think? I Naruto's face paled. She watched as he spilled between different emotions in the span of a split second. Fear. Disappointment. Frustration. Emotion she was well accustomed to, it wasn't a surprise that he felt an inkling of it. An orphan as well and for reasons unknown to her, absolutely hated by the village. For a moment, she thought about retracting her question. No one can hear us. After all the shouting and the broken glass, you ask that now? Point taken. Naruto sighed. I promise not to spill your secret do you promise not to spill mine? I promise. Satsuki nodded. You and everyone else were wondering how I got my hit I ate. Naruto frowned. Mizuki came to me with a proposition to retake the graduation exam, but it was a lie. He had me steal the scroll of forbidden ninjutsu from the Hokage Tower. I. You did what? You want me to finish or not? Satsuki shook her head in disbelief. Go ahead then. After I learned an ninjutsu from the scroll, I was ambushed by Mizuki, and he told me the truth behind everything, all confirmed by the old man Hokage himself. Remember the nine-tailed fox, thirteen years ago? What about it? The Yandane couldn't kill it. He sealed it. Satsuki was about to ask, but something clicked in her head. Demon. Oh. Yeah. Oh. She frowned further, sinking into her seat. Arms tightening across her chest, her eyes fell to her bare feet and the floorboards beneath them. Naruto did the same, neither of them speaking for what felt like an eternity. What was there to say? Both of them had secrets that would upend everything the entire village believed and what their comrades knew. Satsuki hissed inwardly. If everyone were to find out she were a girl too soon, other villages would find out. If the secret of Naruto's tenant would come out, there, no doubt, would be people coming after him to take that power away. Everything fell back on them being weak. You're weak, Satsuki. Hate me, little sister. Return to me when you have the same eyes. Her brows furrowed, deepening as that voice rung in her head. Unbeknownst to her, Naruto was in the same boat. His thoughts trailed left and right, wondering if and when Satsuki would ostracize him too. The truth of all of his problems laid bare for the girl he had caught unaware he didn't deserve an ounce of sympathy from her, but he had held desperately to that hope that she would forgive him, at least move on and give him another chance to earn her trust. If she was supposed to be his teammate, he wanted to put all of this behind them and move forward. Naruto. Satsuki hummed. I'm going to be honest. I hate you. So, so much. But not because of the fox inside you. I hate you because you annoy the hell out me and you're a moron. When he released a sigh of relief, she almost snapped at the whiplash again. God, I think we need therapists or something. But that doesn't mean you have to stay a moron. H huh? Whether I'm Sasuke or Satsuki, I am in close correspondence with Hokage-sama, after all, he is the one who helped devise the seal. He does monthly checkups to ensure that the matrices remain stable. I will admit, I feel like I'm plateauing in my skills if I don't receive an actual training partner to compete with. Hold on, what are you saying? Naruto raised his hands in defense. Be honest with yourself, Naruto. Satsuki said. Your skills as a ninja suck. My socializing skills need work. You help me, I help you. Besides, it's a great way to make sure you don't go spilling my secrets. So you're saying you want me to train with you? What? Are you trying to tell me you didn't have fun beating the snot out of each other in the academy? Naruto, for all of his turmoil, burst into contagious laughter. Satsuki couldn't fight the smirk growing on her face. Before she knew it, she was smiling at his antics. Naruto wiped the tear from his eye and focused his gaze on the girl in front of him. I need to get strong to become Hokage. Let's do it. First things first, Satsuki raised a hand, when I'm not personal, I am Sasuke to you and everyone else, got it? Unless somehow the situation calls for it, I don't hold the Kaiubi inside me. For the first time in a long time, the two of them felt the weight on their shoulders lighten. 
For the first time in an unbelievably long time, they felt that they finally had someone to lean on, someone who understood somewhat what went on their broken little heads. However, neither wanted to make the first move, say something that could be taken out of context, even Naruto, the ever boisterous and extroverted fool, had taken a mental step back and looked at the whole situation. This was a friend. Not like Shikamaru and Choji, but a friend he felt he trusted on a deeper level. Sure, the whole reason they spilled their secrets was convoluted, but regardless, they had a shared bond. Something that held them together, something so incredibly insane that it would turn Konoha upside down if released when the time wasn't right. For a moment, just that moment, as he took everything in, processing every word, promise and secret spilled, he was elated. As his smile began to falter, he noticed Satsuki's as well. A mimic in emotion, a reflection as broken as his own. Hey. Naruto said. You and I have goals that we want more than anything. We've already bared the worst secrets we have, help me become Hokage, and I'll help you hunt down your brother. Tsutsuki choked on her spit. Excuse me? What brought this on? What can I say Naruto rubbed the back of his head. Even though we never talked I considered you a friend. And what are friends for? Ha! Tsutsuki giggled. We are definitely not friends. Naruto's face fell. Geez, twist the knife why don't you? You just learned the true me, I just learned the true you. I think it's a little too fast to be calling each other friend, especially given the circumstances. Satsuki giggled once more, this time, the condescending tone had vanished. Like I said before, I don't like you. You're annoying, you're stupid and most of all, weak. Naruto cringed. There you go again with the knife twisting. But those can be changed. Satsuki rolled her eyes. What, you think I was born smart? Born with all the skills I have? No. Maybe some of it, but everything I have, I trained for. I bled for. I read books, I studied, I trained until my seal would break and then trained some more. So that's why you have the social skills of roadkill. Says the one who doesn't know how to stay quiet for more than three seconds. I bet you talk in your sleep too. Oh, I even talk when I eat. Naruto responded with the same snark. Tsutsuki fasipamed, t this is what I mean. Alright, dipshit, on your feet. He snapped in salute, drawing an uncharacteristic giggle from the Ichiha. Put your hand down. Okay, here's what we're going to do. You want to be respected as a shinobi and become Hokage, I want to be respected as a Kanoichi one day and bring my brother to justice. We can't do either if we're the same weaklings we are now. I know we just became genin, but why walk when you can run? Before you say anything, no, I'm not getting rid of the orange. Naruto glared. I can see it in your eyes. You little. Other than that, lay it on me, Satsuki sensei Don't call me that. Okay, Satsuki-chan. Who do you want me to kill you? What would you say if I said no? Then don't call me that either. Fine, fine. No fun. Anyway, before I was rudely interrupted Satsuki sighed into her palm, we will train every day. In between missions, during missions, every second we have time, we will be at the training grounds, expanding our skills, trying to do everything in our power to get more power. Diets will have to be changed, attire will have to be changed, fighting styles will be learned, ninjutsu, one day, will be learned. Itachi is one of the most dangerous criminals in all the elemental nations, and the title of Hokage means that you're the strongest in the village. Some shadow clones and a high pain tolerance won't tip the scales in your favor. Alright, then, Satsuki, do your worst. Something strange echoed in her chest as she and Naruto bumped fists. It was as if a whole new world was opened up to her. Windows were raised, curtains were drawn, winds and warmth rushed in to meet her with its open embrace. It was as if it were a rebirth, a second coming, a revival. The dead weight that rested in her chest, the fears that fermented and coalesced into the nightmares that haunted her, faded, glistening in the light of sun, in the light of his chakra. It was breathtaking, exhilarating, and it. Tsutsuki, please I know we just got over the murder phase, Naruto cringed. W what now? I think I had some bad milk this morning. I need to use your bathroom badly. Oh god, what the fuck, Naruto. Oh no, I need to go, now. No, do it on the street, you idiot. I'm really sorry, I swear. I just had a plumber here last week. It was bright and sunny summer day and the village hidden in the leaves. Jen and teams were running amok between streets and alleyways, doing the most menial of jobs. Chunin and Jimin were leaving the village gates, never to be seen for weeks on end, while others lounged on rooftops and watchtowers, jumping through the skyline of the village. Upon the busiest strip in Kanoha, a beautiful flower shop stood in broad view, bringing in hordes of customers and people gawking at wares. Ami, warm and beaming with life, in the back room, sitting on bags of fertilizer, Eno and Sakura ate ice cream, wiping the sweat from their brows. An off day for both of them, no missions, no training, just relaxing in each other's presence. 
The Pinkett still claimed the rival card, but her actions always spoke louder than her words did, as hard as that was to believe. As Eno snapped the stick and tossed it into a trash bin, she turned to the girl beside her, flipping blonde bangs. So, what's your team like? It's been a month since we all graduated, I've been wondering how everyone is doing. Having Sasuke-kun and Naruto around 24-7 must be the best thing ever and the worst at the same time, huh? Sakura's expression turned somber, but also confused. Snapping her own stick and tossing it across the room, she sighed. It's it's kinda hard to explain. Ina raised a brow. Try me. Well, you know how Naruto and Sasuke-kun hated each other in the academy. Yeah. One day, they returned for team training and a mission, and it was as if they were the best of friends. It's so strange to watch. Sakura ran her hands through her hair. Sasuke-kun barely acknowledged me to begin with, but now, he and even Naruto barely talk to me unless they have to. Literally. One day, Naruto is asking me out on a date, one that I was honestly kind of considering, but he disappeared completely. I didn't see Sasuke-kun either. Then the next day, they're talking and discussing. You know, they were talking to one another. No arguing, almost little to no insults, no threats and Naruto wasn't shouting about how he was going to kick Sasuke-kun's ass. It's been like that for the last three weeks and and I don't know what to make of it. Ino's brows raised further. Huh. Why you don't think? W what Sakura shrieked. And no. No way. It, it can't be. There's no way. I mean, he never gave any other girl a chance. He that's because he had personal traumas, H he had reasons. That is a reason. Sasuke-kun couldn't be. I mean, even if he was, why Naruto? Wouldn't you think he'd go for someone more competent? Say, what do you think Naruto and Sasuke are up to? Ino asked. I want to see this for myself. I mean, I guess they're training right now. They're training. Ino was finding this conversation tiresome. Her eyebrow just would not come down with every revelation. Why aren't you training with them? The Kashi sensei is busy with the Hokage today, and Naruto and Sasuke don't include me in their training. Sakura frowned. I know I've said it a lot, but it's so strange. They were so big on working as a team, but for some reason, as soon as they start sparring, there is no one else in their little world but each other. Pink tinge grew on both of their cheeks. No fucking way. Oh god. No. 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 Oh, the way that was said. We definitely have to and see what's up. Naruto was getting frustrated. Okay, frustrated was putting it lightly. He was annoyed. Tsutsuki was getting a kick out of this. Okay, a kick was putting it lightly. She was having the time of her life. Tsutsuki had maintained the facade of Sasuke and was currently grating the last of his nerves. Any further and he swore he'd be numb to pain and annoyance. She slapped him every time his legs loosened from the horse dance. A bamboo stick in hand, the instant the angle of his knees were wrong, she'd smack his thigh, his calves, his knees literally every possible place she could to keep him as stiff and as angular as possible. If she hits me one more time, I'm going to beat the living dog shit out of her. I think I'm enjoying myself too much. Satsuki, however, hummed in the back of her head. Red on her cheeks from how hot it was, she raised bamboo stick once more, smacking Naruto's back the moment she caught the slouch beginning to form. It hasn't been more than 20 minutes at 6 years old, I was able to hold a horse dance for 2 hours. Come on, Blondie, I thought you wanted to be Hokage. I know she said it was some sort of bullshit chakra control exercise, but I'm beginning to think she just wanted free licks in. Naruto growled in his mind. Holding the horse dance, arms extended, he scowled inwardly as the bamboo stick hit him once again. Hold the damn horse dance for an hour. An hour my ass. This is literal child's play for an Achiha, and I'm assuming, the rest of the clan children. Satsuki thought to herself as she paced around him. She tossed the stick away, letting it bounce against blades of grass. Walking around the Uzumaki once more, eyes scanned his form. If he hasn't figured it out yet, I'm going to actually scream. He's supposed to also use chakra when holding the stance. The constant kneading will maintain his stance and plant him to the earth. I have been trying to hold myself steady, but my damn chakra control is so shot, this is harder than it frickin' looks. Naruto cursed. Blue eyes blinded by sweat, he maintained his stance. Arms extended, knees bend, ass out like he was sitting on a bench. He could not risk Satsuki deciding on the bamboo stick again. Handling chakra into his arms to stiffen the muscles, he cursed inwardly as his arms began to drop. Oh, come on. Please. Don't fucking hit me again. Okay, time for a different approach. Satsuki sighed into her hand. Okay doofus, calm down and relax. She walked behind him, remembering the times her mother, brother and father helped train her. He might be a visual learner. The shuffle of grass and fabric was heard, and before he knew it, she was behind him, donning the horse dance. He looked back, red forming on cheeks at the proximity. 
her true face phasing in and out through the weakening of the seal. Don't say a word. Just follow what I'm doing. Arms snaked forward, hands wrapping around his elbows. Slowly, she raised his arms forward, maintaining the horse dance as if it were the most natural of dispositions. I'm going to mold my own chakra through you to help you get an idea of what it's supposed to feel like. Satsuki narrowed her eyes. God, how the hell did you make it this far? Hey, I never give up, that's how. Naruto snarked. Well, your willpower to keep your arms up for extended periods of time tells me otherwise, loser. S shut up, asshole. He closed his eyes, returning back to the basics of chakra manipulation. It was the place between serenity and clarity. A place where his physical strength collided with his spiritual strength. He had to realize the equilibrium, the thrashing shores of his inner strength and that of the unwavering spirit. Their powers are great, with one always trying to overpower the other, but within each, there was an inkling of weakness, exploitable and easy to subsume. Despite all of that, the simplest of chakra manipulation was feeling the energy within their body, from the point strategically placed to the rippling core in his stomach. As Itsuki's seal began to fade, revealing her feminine face for the bird singing in the trees to see, her dark onyx eyes met with Naruto's cerulean blues. A moment of understanding as clear and vivid as the day their knuckles touched. This chakra was warm, warmer than any she had ever felt before. It was the same as that day the moron broke into her apartment and violated every rule of privacy, even tainting the sanctity of her bathroom with his presence. There was something about it that was just so incredibly different to her own. The hairs on Naruto's arms were raising by the second as she churned her chakra into his tenketsu. She could not find the words to describe the felling she was receiving, and neither could Naruto. It was as if their chakras were opposites of the same coin. Naruto began to lean back, Satsuki's body was sturdy, despite the faltering seal. Pressed together, sharing summer warmth between their shirts and bandages, it was almost a lullaby. His mind was in limbo, floating in a sea of ice-cold darkness, yet there was nothing to be afraid of. The things far out of sight, unable to snuff that one beacon that flickered in the empty void. It wasn't him either it was Satsuki. The darkness, the freezing piercing cold, it was all her. Through it all, he began to feel the warmth of his kneading chakra running through his chakra coils back and forth, to his toes, back up to his chest and out toward his arms, to the very tip of his fingertips, only to repeat the trailing pathways, until every signal, every ping of chakra meeting Tenketsu, returned to his stomach, kneading, building, churning, into. Rumble. Naruto snapped awake, finding himself under the beaming hot midday sun. Behind him, Satsuki's seal had almost completely dropped, revealing her elongated eyelashes, thick lips and slim jawline. The wrappings of her chest, nearly visible through her Ichiha shirt. Naruto kept his eyes away, spying the red tinge of her cheeks. So, uh. Shut up. I think I have a new name for you, Satsuki. Sundier chan Satsuki took a sharp breath. You are so fucking lucky that I need to be in this stance to draw chakra to the seal. I want to kick your ass so badly. That gives me a minute to speak my mind, eh, Sundier chan What, forgot to eat breakfast or something, Sundier chan This is why I hate you. This is literally why. Ino and Sakura walked through the brush toward training ground 7. Crossing paths with other genin teams and their genin sensei, nameless backgrounds, they arrived at the site of their confusion. Taking a moment, hidden by brush and bushes, they refused to take the next step. For some reason, they were beginning to regret showing up. It was a mutual, unspoken kind of agreement. The air was off, the vibes were wrong, something else was afoot, and the more rational parts of their minds were telling them to turn around, or else they, at best, might find nothing, or at the very worst, find what they were looking for. Neither option was a good one. The first made it seem like everything was a waste of time, and the second well, neither wanted to think that far ahead. The blonde of the two neared Sakura with a somewhat pensive look. Okay, I know I said that I wanted to see what was really happening, but geez, this is actually kin to making me sweat. You'll see. Sakura sighed in defeat. They're probably grappling and all over each other right now. By all over each other you mean. Yup. Sakura sighed once more. I'd squeal from seeing Sasu-kun shirtless if it weren't for the fact that he and Naruto are so engrossed with one another when they spar. Every time, ever since that day Naruto disappeared after asking me out on a date, everything was different. He no longer declares a fight for me, Sasu doesn't even give me that annoying grunt in the end, without Kakashi sensei to keep them in line, whenever they train together, it looks like I'm third wheeling. Oh god, the more I say it out loud I'm really starting to think. He no however, leaned in once more. H how close are we talking? D that's all you got from that rant. Sakura fascipened. If you want to know so bad. Skin. 2. Skin. Oh my god. Technically, Sasu is covered in bandages. Sakura frowned. The pin cat turned to the blonde with an inquisitive look. You know that don't you? 
That's why you decided on the mummy get up, right? Ino shrugged. Some dumb fashion sense to make Sasuke-kun notice me. I mean, I really don't need them at this point, it's just habit. Ugh, anyway. Sasuke-kun is covered in bandages and Naruto. What about him? W what about him? Sakura asked incredulously. As if Ino had grown another head, Sakura paled at the question. I didn't think I had to spell it out for the smartest girl of our graduating class. What does he look like, forehead? Ino face faulted. He's got a high pain tolerance and was decently strong the last I remembered. What does he look like under that god-awful jumpsuit? Uh Sakura gave the girl a horrified look. Uh? Like a uh, why do you want to know, pig? I'm curious. I want to know what makes Naruto so appealing to Sasuke. Ino said. However, as the final syllable left her lips, her face crunched as if she bit into something sour. Nope. That does not know. God no. I think I'm gonna be sick. See, Naruto made you sick huh? I it's not that. Ino blushed, dipping her head into the bush in front of her. I I I kinda want to see it even more now. You fucking pervert, Ino. Sakura paled at her confession. Sasuke-kun could be gay, Ino. Gay. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. He's pretty for a guy, and even though the duck butt is kind of funny to look at from certain angles, he has a good routine for keeping his hair healthy. Ino shrugged, the blush still not leaving her face. Wait. Does this mean that Sasuke is a twink? I mean, if they are gay, Sasuke is definitely the feminine one. Hardly. Sakura defended, red on her cheeks beginning to spread. You're still defending a boy who might not even be attracted to women. Ino could not believe her ears. And no, it's not that, pig. Sakura shook her head incredulously. Just erg, come on and look. Sliding underneath the bushes, they crawled across overturned dirt and cold blades of grass. Careful not to agitate any leaves or branches, they got a good view of the training field in all of its glory. A secluded place with three wooden posts and a stone monument that many young shinobi have seen or heard of. But what really caught their attention was the pair of shirtless boys pressed together, their legs apart in horse dance. The raven-haired boy was covered in bandages, his hand snaking ever so slightly up and down the blonde's arms, almost massaging his muscles. Sweat dipping in between the troughs of his forearm dips and the biceps and triceps. Ino and Sakura took a collective gulp as their jaws dropped lower and lower. The blonde boy was leaned in, his back pressed against the bandaged boy, the sweat trickling down their backs, slowly meandering between creased shoulder blades and back muscles. Scars, cuts and bruises, there were markings on the blonde boy's body that looked fresh. Ino couldn't believe her eyes and looking over to Sakura, neither could the pinket. I I'm assuming it never got that bad. And no. T this is the f first time I I'm s seeing this. Sakura all but drooled as she said it. The blonde boy had his hair down, follicles sticking to his whiskered face. Mouth slightly ajar, it was almost sensual to watch. The raven-haired boy continued his movements, sliding his palms across bare skin, maintaining the horse dance. I think I'm about to pass out. Ino whispered weakly. Looking over, Sakura's face was pressed into the dirt, not a sound to be heard. Naruto relaxed to Satsuki's touch. She had remembered seeing her mother massaging her father during their early morning calisthenics. As her chakra control really helped Naruto, it wasn't doing enough. His reserves were just too damn large, and she may have allegedly damaged his flesh and some tinketsu. Allegedly, of course. She wanted to make it up to him, if not for the sheer fact that she could at least accept when she was wrong. This wasn't to say he was going to get away with calling her at Sundier. Oh, how that infuriated her. That was neither here nor there at the moment. The only thing that mattered was mastering, or at the very least, having an intermediate understanding of chakra control exercises. It was a bit of a pain having to forcibly mimic kneading with her own chakra, that was chakra that she needed to force into the seal. Already, she could feel her short hair beginning to elongate. The bandages and binds that flattened her chest were doing all they could to keep her secret. It was just too damn hot outside. The sun was high, it was early to midsummer, temperatures were almost inferno. She had to admit, despite all the initial frustrations they had when they first started this section of training, Naruto caught on to the teachings rather well and soaked information like a sponge. Running her hands across his biceps, he shivered, sinking deeper into the musings of her calloused fingertips. Gone was the face of Sasuke, now, it was fully Satsuki. The red on Naruto's cheeks, the red on her own beginning to trickle across her face, from ear to ear, she bit her lip, remembering why she was even doing this in the first place. If Naruto could not get even the most basic of chakra control exercises down, there would be no way he could even think of doing elemental training. With his chakra reserves and the potency of his chakra screamed elemental affinities and powerful ones at that. As his chakra began to die down, hers went with his. Like steam, it vanished into the air, sparkling blue before fading into obscurity. 
slowly, her features turned masculine, her hair was shortening by the second, and the red of her cheeks faded as well. Before Naruto could prepare himself, her fist dug into the back of his head, launching him forward. Rolling through the dirt, he crashed against a wooden pole, collapsing into himself, choking up spit and blood. Yup he said weakly. So, fucking worth it. Tsutsuki growled, throwing a hand to her face. W why are you such a moron? Chapter 3. You can do so much better, sister. D rank. D rank. D rank. That same pathetic cat. That same idiot old man who couldn't watch a paraplegic goat to save his life. An old lady who couldn't find her geriatric way across the street. That same pathic cat. If they weren't trying to keep up appearances, Satsuki was certain that she and Naruto would be crying their eyes out in front of the old Hokage. Another mission. More like shit Sion. The daimyo's wife cannot and should not be allowed to own a pet, any pet. Satsuki, as Sasuke, cringed as the lady wept her fat tears down her pudgy puffing, wrinkled obese face, staining her mascara and eyeshadow as she wept and wiped through her manic episode. If I were that stupid cat, I'd run away too, honestly. Glancing over, it would seem both Naruto and Sakura felt the same way. That feline, its anger, its rage and claws. They couldn't even fight back if the damn lady received a dead animal, not only would there be hell to pay, no one would get paid. She needed money to keep her pantry stacked since Naruto couldn't shop for groceries. Speaking of groceries, she took a deep breath. It was finally a cheat day to eat as she pleased. Some oven roasted pompano, filled with tomatoes and onions, seasoned with lemon pepper and garlic salt, with a nice helping of sticky rice, she could already taste the yellow fish on her tongue. Better yet, she didn't have to share anything with the blonde oaf who stood beside Sakura. Inwardly glaring, she knew that changing their diets would be important, but she didn't take into consideration one key fact, higher chakra means more calories burned, which means more food intake, which means she'd be in the kitchen almost every night, trying to make sure her future partner in murder can keep up with her when the time comes. As she said before, why walk when you can run? Itachi had been running since the day he was born, she assumed. With the way people still whisper about him behind her back, the way some Jinin and Chunin speak of Itachi with fear and fondness, it was more than enough to get her on her feet and ready to start jazzing. Stopping herself, she caught the somewhat bored look of the Hokage. She remembered his words, she remembered his deal. I just need to do a few more D ranks, and then we'll be cleared for a C rank. Just a few more. Just a few more. I need to maintain composure, especially in front of the man who can decide whether or not to sanction my search for my brother. I need to prove to him that I am more than capable. Not just as a Kanoichi, but as a ninja. If it came out that I were a girl as a genin, the fallout would be immense. Teams would be reshuffled, I would be relegated to a stupid support role as the vast majority of Kanoichi are. I can fight and I will prove to him and that stupid council that I can. I'm not Itachi. I can't hate anyone. No matter how hard I try, even Naruto. Satsuki looked at the blonde. His eyes fluttered open and closed, as if he were trying to fight a yawn. As if on cue, however, he stretched, throwing his arms up in an obnoxious manner, nearly hitting herself and Sakura. Okay, I'm on the fence with him still. He's not so bad, honestly, I just wish he'd shut up more. Anyway, Itachi. No matter how hard he tried to make me into him, it's not working. I feel anger, but I don't feel hate. I haven't felt hate in my life. I fear him, I'm angry at him, but hate. He's my big brother. He's my he was everything I wanted to be, and I wanted nothing more than to make him proud. Even father was visibly prouder of me than he ever was. Satsuki's head tilted low. As Sasuke, she maintained the indifferent persona to the talks rummaging throughout the Hokage Tower and the missions department. Councilman, old wrinkled crones, watched her with calculating eyes. The one with glasses kept a stoic face, unable to be read, even on an off day. The one beside him was a tiny little woman, menopause was not kind to her. The ornaments in her hair jingled with every shaking move she made. Satsuki knew better, she was a relic of a more glorious time for Shinobi and Kinoichi. She earned her right to be so weak looking. However, the one that made her uncomfortable, no matter how many times she had seen him in the halls of the Hokage Tower, was the one with black hair and wrinkled shut eyes. The man wrapped in bandages. Yet, no matter how many wrappings he donned, he could not hide the sinister intent waving off of him in droves. Satsuki had to remind herself they were soldiers in the military machine. Any moment, any step out of line, or rather, in line, could result in a visit from any of those counselors. The one she really wanted to avoid was Danzo, the bandage-wrapped old man. Despite his cane and wounded outward appearance, he did not become the Hokage's councilman without being strong. If Shinobi were anything, they were unpredictable and hard to get a red on. This man personified that. So, Kakashi-kun, another D-rank completed. Hiruzen took a long puff of his pipe. That makes 15 done so far. Quite the efficient team you have. 
that's nothing my adorable little genin can't handle. Kakashi's eye smile made the Ichiha glare. I have a selection of deer ranks for you to choose from. Hiruka said with a smile. There are some wolves who are harassing nearby farmland. A fence needs to be rebuilt after a landslide. A cat stuck in a tree. And of course helping the old man find his poor goat again. Naruto visibly paled. Satsuki watched him from the corner of her eye. The idiot was about to explode. Honestly, so was she. They had trained for more than this nonsense. They were shinobi. Even Sakura was starting to lose her mind, and she was Sakura. Sure, she was getting better and budding into their training regimen, especially when not prompted to, but she couldn't deny that the girl had finally stopped with the honorifics and stopped squealing every time Sasuke walked into a room. There was a change in demeanor, some confidence here and there, but what really caught Satsuki's attention was the confusion. The awkwardness. As she know I'm a girl? Did she figure it out? Sakura gulped as the missions were doled and discussed between Kakashi and Aruka. Despite how riveting of a topic, trivial jobs and missions were to the pinket, she was doing everything in her small power to keep her eyes averted from Sasuke's intense gaze. D did he know that me and Ino were watching them flirt I is he going to fight me? L listen, Sasuke, why you can have Naruto? I just don't know what you see in him. There's fear in her eyes. Satsuki tried to fight the glare. She knows something and she's afraid of others figuring it out. I mean that is what a secret is, but still. Her. What kind of secret does she have that requires this kind of reaction from a passing glance? HN. If she does know that I'm a girl, at least she didn't break into my apartment to harass me. Ugh, at least she isn't frowning over me like she did in the academy. I just don't get it. Why him? What is going on in that head of yours? Like, I mean, sure, he can be kinda endearing at times, but overall, he's just the literal worst. Maybe I should give her some of the treatment I've been giving the moron. A good smack or two to make her talk. I mean, at least he's toned down on the orange, but still. Why? HN. It's whatever. She'll talk eventually. She always does. Naruto blinked, sticking his finger in his nose. Man, I'm starving. How much longer before we get a real mission? Oh god, he finally looked away. Sakura murmured in her head. Emerald eyes quaking in their sockets for the slightest change in hair. Naruto, for all his stupidity, was lost in his own world, and Sakura could not be more thankful. You know he's actually not that bad looking. But still. God. I have been chasing a gay man. Wait. Does that mean Naruto used me as a cover to hide his true feelings? Hmm. You know, I've been wondering for a while now, how the hell does a lame goat find its way out of a pen we've built four different times? Naruto asked to no one in particular. Does that oh that doesn't help my confidence at all? Maybe it has chakra? Naruto thought with a smirk. Imagine. A goat. I mean shit, they can climb steep mountain cliffs and climb trees somehow. Odd, everything is literally falling apart and we haven't even had a real mission yet. Sakura screeched, pressing her hands to her head. The boy I crushed on is gay, and the boy who crushed on me is gay. What does that say about me? I'm praying we get a quick and easy mission. I just want to go home and eat. Satsuki murmured in her head. How how does it weave hand signs? It doesn't have hands. My stomach is killing me. My brain is killing me. My heart is racing and I think I'm having a panic attack. Sakura's eyes were wide now, bloodshot by the second. I need to punch something. I need something to do. Something other than glorified chores. Give us a real mission. Silence. Naruto and Sasuke both turned to the pinket whose face was blurring red. Haruka dropped a scroll, labeled as deer ank, and even Kakashi snapped his orange book shut. Everyone was staring at her, all eyes leveled at her and her massive forehead. The blonde of the three nodded his head and newfound respect in his eyes. Nice. Who knew she'd have the balls? Satsuki raised a brow. Huh. Well would you look at that. Asakura. Haruka paled as he rose from his seat. W what did you just say? Red immediately flushed away, replaced with paling white. Eyes as wide as plates, Sakura froze for a moment. Sweat forming in an instant, the metal plate of her hit eye ache began to fog. She was in the thick of it now. Clearing her throat, she stepped forward, shooting her head down in a respectful bow. Neither Sasuke or Naruto knew what was going on. She turned her head, giving the two of them a pleading look, motioning for them both to follow her lead. The Achiha of course, caught on and bowed, leaving Naruto standing upright like a fool. Bow too, idiot. Naruto, don't fucking leave me out to hang. What's going on? Naruto raised a brow at the two of them. Shrugging, he crossed his arms over his chest, turning his gaze to the Hokage, who amusedly smoked his pipe. She's right. Give us a real mission, old man. Sasuke didn't know it was possible for someone to get paler than white, but Sakura managed to do it. The pinket was about to snap. Satsuki was sure of it. 
Through Sasuke's eyes, she watched and waited patiently for the loose cannon to finally fire. But it was all for naught, as the Hokage began to laugh and choke on his most recent drag. Smoke trickling from his dry lips, he laughed harder, bringing the pipe to the tabletop. What a fine team. Hiruzen smiled. Aruka, give them a C-rank. Let's see how confident they really are. B but Hokage-sama. Aruka turned to the man. T they've only been active for three months. We can't. I am Hokage. I just made an order, Aruka kun Why yes, sir. Aruka fumbled through the list of missions. Bringing up a scroll, he tossed it to Kakashi. Naruto means a lot to me, Hadik-san. Do not let him get hurt. You and me both, Aruka. Kakashi gave him a lazy nod. All right, kiddos, stop embarrassing yourselves and let's get this mission started. Waves. Water. Ninjutsu. Senban. So much had happened since they crossed that fake water puddle. Chains and a pair of morons who thought too highly of themselves. Loath as Naruto was to admit, Satsuki was right, he did lock up. If it weren't for Sasuke's instant reaction time, those guys would have done something far worse than kill a substitution jutsu. Those clawed gauntlets and the spike chains that seemed to never end. Once more, Naruto looked at the raven-haired boy, rather, the girl who hid behind the smoke and mirrors, something different from the normal emotion began to spur within his chest. Maybe in the past, he didn't really notice Sasuke because of his dickish tendencies. Looking at the raven-haired Ichiha now. It was like looking at art. There was something about knowing a crazy secret that you just had to keep from everyone else. Until that secret came out to the public, it brought people together, namely, a brain-dead moron and an abrasive asshole. To Naruto, it was a little hard to explain. A shift in emotion was translated into Satsuki's odd but caring way. That remark, what's wrong, scaredy cat. Something so annoyingly in character for Sasuke, but for Satsuki, there was a hint of worry in that tone. The choice of wording, the intense gaze she gave him. Naruto didn't know what to make of it, but if there was an inkling of doubt in his chest, he knew that she, deep down, started to care about him. Satsuki didn't know why she did what she did. Most importantly, she didn't know why Naruto froze like an idiot in the middle of the fight. Those guys were strong, but they had to be stupider than the blondie. Yet, he froze. Unable to think or even raise his kunai to defend himself. Using the skills she honed as Sasuke, she burst into action, shuriken flying, trapping chains together by their links, and smashed through the pair of them, kunai pressed against their throats. Sakura was watching. She already suspects something is off. What's wrong, scaredy cat? God you moron. You can't be hokage if you can't stand up for yourself and I can't fight my brother alone. I cannot afford to lose the only person who god what the hell am I saying. Standing straight, Sasuke pat his shoulders, yawning at the display. Turning away from the nervous Akura and the reddening Naruto, he looked to the trees as if he were expecting someone. Kakashi. What the hell are you doing hiding? Ma, ma, Sasuke, I knew you three had it handled. The Jimnin nodded with his ridiculous eye smile. You were quick to react, Sasuke. Though, I am a bit disappointed in your performance, Naruto. Sakura, you didn't even do anything but at least you moved to protect Azuna right off the jump. Sorry. I can't be too harsh on you three after all, we were paid to protect you against bandits not missing ninja, Tazuna. Everything was a blur. Sakura watched from the rear, hands and fingers clasped together, palms pressed into one. A blinding sheet of mist, a cry from Naruto and Sasuke over the blinding barriers. Shuriken, kunai, ninjutsu, all thrown and clashed together in a series of earth-shattering, earth-ripping explosions. Bakashi and Zabuza met, Kubikirabacho, and a lone kunai knife met, a shower of sparks left in the wake of their kiss of death. She trembled as she stayed as close to Tazuna as she could, kunai up and hands quivering with fear. She needed to do something, but just like the blonde she so vehemently despised just minutes before, she couldn't move either. Through the mist, Naruto and Sasuke flew back, rolling in the dirt before they repositioned themselves in unison. A pink eyebrow raised, almost like the shadow clones Naruto employed, the two of them, Naruto and Sasuke, shared a glance. Like their spars in the training fields that happened every single day, they were trapped in their own little world. She could only watch, breathless, weak and afraid. They moved together, jumping in and out of the bout, while their sensei fell back to get some air. They were quick, precise and most importantly of all, persistent. Something that was sure to aggravate a legendary missing ninja like Zabuza. She tried to move, she tried to do something anything to join her teammates, but her body just would not listen to her. The child, caught in between a rock and a hard place, caught in a situation that no child should ever have to face, faced it anyway. Gulping, she stood her ground, standing watch over Tazuna, much to his relative displeasure. She didn't care if he thought they were useless brats, she didn't care if she couldn't join Naruto or Sasuke in the front. She was going to do her job, she was going to be a Kanoichi of Kanahagakur. You know you look like a total bitch for blowing up at that kid like that, right? 
Naruto ignored the girl as he punched the tree. Knuckles peeling, blood spraying against the flattened bark, he couldn't focus on anything else but the target in front of him. She knew what was bothering him. She knew it too well. I get it. The kid was out of line, but can you blame him? Satsuki said trying to get him to look at her. She had even dropped the seal. Maybe she was running out of chakra, but at least the sentiment was still there. He was letting what Inari said get to him, and he wasn't reacting the way Shinobi should. Naruto, will you at least listen? He didn't stop. Fists flying, smashing until the bone was left as bloody paste and reeling skin. Satsuki had half a mind to pull ointment from her pouch, but the trickling steam stopped her actions. She watched carefully as the battered bone and the blood spilling free began to suck in. Skin rolled and merged, sealing over the hills and troughs of his new knuckles. He was in a daze, eyes pressed toward the tree trunk, as if there was nothing else in the world. If she was feeling a little conceited, she jokingly imagined herself standing pressed against the tree. The idiot needs to calm down. Hey, instead of breaking every bone in your tiny body, try chakra control instead. It tires you out quicker and at most of all you won't be hurting yourself in the process. What if I fall? Naruto asked in an uncharacteristically small voice. I'll catch you. Satsuki crossed her arms under her chest. What? Don't trust a friend. I thought you said we weren't friends. What can I say? She smirked, rolling up her sleeves. Naruto winced as she grabbed his still bloodied hand with a wet rag. Chakra rolled between her fingertips, fire chakra coming to life, igniting into unseen warmth. The boy flinched as she pressed the rag against his hands, careful not to agitate the bone and skin. Over these last few months, you've grown on me somewhat. Sasuke Satsuki. We. Naruto blinked at the word. As simple as it was, it really struck a chord with him. Her sincerity could not be faked. Gulping nervously, she kept her gaze on him, as if there was something stuck to his face. In deep focus, she reached up, surprising him further. A clink and a clank, the shuffling of fabric and linen, she reached up with a dry rag and dragged it across his hit I ate. No words were shared as she went through her motions. He sighed through flaring nostrils before finding the words to say to the Acheha. Under the moonlight, her face contoured to the shadows, really showing the Yuzumaki just how beautiful she really was. A small nose, sharp eyes, fierce fire burning within her soul. She was getting closer, almost uncomfortably close. His hands trapped in her grip. She simply continued her motions, wiping the flaking blood from between the webs of his fingers. Onyx hair had fallen, framing her face, some bangs gathering to the right side, hiding half her face from view. He had a conversation planned, a declaration to change the mood or something, anything, but whatever he tried to say, choked at the tip of his tongue, leaving him gaping like a stupid fish. Which, being honest with himself, wasn't far off from the truth. Lithe fingers still topped with calloused pads, drifted between the callouses of his own, rough and scratching against the troughs and cracks. Her chakra springing forth, he sighed again, this time, devoid of the frustration that had been building in his heart and head. It was soothing, relaxing and honestly, the most calming sensation he had ever felt. He couldn't help but wonder where this Itsuki had come from and where she had been since they met. She was always a tough abrasive bitch just waiting for the first excuse to insult and hit him. Yet, here she was, handling his broken hands as if they were delicate flowers. Huh. Maybe she is at Sundier. I've been thinking recently, Naruto. Satsuki said, flicking her hair from her face. The silence broken, his gaze fell to meet Hironic's eyes. I have been a little rough with you, haven't I? I want to apologize if I ever overstepped any bounds. Naruto choked, pulling away from her. W what brought this on, all of sudden? We have an agreement and might I add, one we've been very good at keeping. B besides, what's a little pain? I've dealt with worse anyway, right? Her eye twitched for a moment, but for once in his life, he said something that wasn't ridiculous. Before he could walk away, she grabbed his hand once again, forcing him to stay still. If you're going to keep training, at least remember the other part of the bargain. We train together. As much as it loathes me to say it, Sakura understood the tree walking exercise better than both of us. I'm pretty sure you can imagine the kind of hurt that dealt to my ego. So, the Ichiha admits to having an ego. Naruto quickly surmised. Receiving a head slap, he cringed, giving her a look, hello. Injured here. That's only because you don't know how to deal with your problems the right way. That's cute coming from the supposed boy. Naruto raised a brow. Tsutsuki didn't respond the way he thought she would. She shook her head, rolled her eyes and smirked a little before returning to her motions. He winced as her grip tightened between his knuckles, but it never progressed into violence. For all her bravado as Sasuke, alone in the woods, far from any prying eyes, she was sweeter than any girl he had ever known. She was tender when she needed to be and a complete slave driver when she wanted to be. There was almost no telling what he'd get when they were alone and the seal was turned off. 
Sheathing the rag, she gave him a nod. Come on, we have trees to climb. Last one to the top pays for Raymond when we get back. Deal, loser. In the instant the words left her lips, she watched the somber expression, the uncomfortable blush, and the glimmering water clinging to the surface of his cerulean eyes, evaporate. All of it. Every emotion was suddenly gone. Like a flick of a switch, or the dropping of a dime. His lips curled upward, his cheeks creasing as the whisker marks contorted to his face splitting grin. His teeth, pearly white in the moonlit night. It was contagious. She couldn't help herself as the smirk of her own began to rise. They gave each other a nod, drawing kunai from their holsters. Another look, a knowing glance, a connection as strong and as fresh as when their knuckles first bumped in her poor apartment. Matching positions, crouching down to prepare for the sprint, they burst forward. In the distance, unbeknownst to the two of them, a pinquette was watching with groggy, but confused eyes. She had gone out to look for them. As odd as it was, what Naruto said to Inari really struck home to the young Kinoichi who, in retrospect, felt like she didn't belong. In a moment of weakness, this is where they were brought, this is their new mission, and with missing ninja, a powerful former shinobi swordsman of the mist and a hunter ninja somewhere rummaging through the lands of wave, it was uncertain what her fate would be. However, those words, that declaration was made with such passion, such vigor, something within her heart began to bubble. Like a pressure that needed release, like a thought that replayed in an infinite loop, like an itch that refused to be scratched, it had awakened something within her. The will to do what needed to be done, the will to keep progressing further, to be a kinoichi. Whatever that meant, she knew it wasn't what the books told her. It wasn't what definitions could ever quantify. What she did that day in the field against Abusa, before that fake hunter ninja took him away, was one of the most exhilarating and eye-opening moments of her shinobi career thus far. Their first sea rank turned into an air rank mission. If the situation weren't so terrible, she might have laughed at their misfortune. She could only imagine what Eno would be doing if her team were stuck in the same predicament. As she neared the sound of breaking wood and crunching leaves, she stopped. The eyes turned to the canopy of the forest. Branches rustled, wood was sliced, and chakra was expelled. Closing her eyes, she began to sense commotion. Naruto and Sasuke were, of course, training. She wound up her courage, stiffened her upper lip and walked through the bushes, stepping into the clearing. They were always running off to improve themselves, leaving her with a lazy bum their sensei was. Now, with him out of commission from chakra exhaustion, there was no telling how long it would take to get him back up to full strength. She needed to train and work harder to be on par, or at least close the distance between them. Bringing a hand to her lips, she called. Naruto. Sasuke. See can I join you two tonight? Rustling branches stopped. There was a pensive silence, one so deep, she could hear her own blood vessels. Naruto poked his head out from a wall of leaves and fruits. As sure, Sakura-chan. We're trying to practice our tree walking, so I don't know if. I read that a master is an eternal student. She said, tying her hair up. You can always improve. Wait up. Bursting up a third tree, as graceful and perfect as she did the first time, she jumped and landed on the same tree branch, eyeing Sasuke and Naruto, their faces drenched in sweat and small cuts from the branches and sticks. To her surprise, Sasuke was out of breath, but smirking at the two of them. His duck butt hair, his onyx eyes to Naruto's bright blonde hair and whisker mark shrouded in shadow. All right, Sakura, Sasuke said. She immediately snapped at attention. It was rare that he would talk to her so openly. Here's the deal. You are the most talented one here when it comes to this chakra exercise, so you'll be the judge, all right. Judge. Yeah, Naruto smirked, wiping sweat on his sleeve, whoever reaches the top of top of their tree last, has to pay for Raymond when we get back to the village. Why you eat Raymond, Sasuke? H.N. What can I say? Hanging out with a loser has rubbed off on me in all the wrong ways. Sakura tried to hide the blush growing on her cheeks. Oh my god, wording. Yeah, Naruto snickered, if anything, it's you rubbing off on me. When was the last time you let me even have Raymond outside of a cheat day? But that's the point of a diet, moron. They're feeding each other Sakura brought her hands to her cheeks. She shook her head, trying to get the images out. They couldn't be. It just couldn't be true. In all fairness, the last time we had a cheat day, you ate all the cookies I made and my ice cream. I was saving them both for a dessert I had planned for weeks. W what? Listen, you left them on the counter unattended for. They go to each other's houses oh, my fucking god. What have I missed? Sakura snapped her eyes shut. Her heart was racing, her thoughts were churning. Opening her eyes, her hallucinations were taking hold, her mind running rampant with her own fantasies. Sasuke laid in Naruto's lap, the two boys watching TV, snacking on warm cookies and hot chocolate. A bowl of ice cream they share as they laugh and giggle with one another in their own apartments. She shook her head, the blush beginning to burn against her palms. Naruto digs his spoon into the vanilla bean scoops, raising the utensil to Sasuke's waiting lips. 
He shakes his head, giving the blonde a glare, but being the idiot he was, he made the Achiha take the bite in one go. Sakura. They leaned in, the tips of their noses touching. Their blushes matching in perfect unison. Sakura. Their leaning continued, Sasuke and Naruto's lap, their lips inching ever closer. Sakura-chan. Naruto clapped his hands. The pin cat flinched, turning to the two boys. Tired emerald eyes softened, but quickly widened as she began to realize what was happening. Neither seemed to notice. Sasuke gave his usual grunt, but Naruto narrowed his eyes as if he had found something off about her. Crawling across the branches, he stopped just a few inches away from her. Hey are you okay, Sakura-chan? You're really red right now. Are you sure you want to train? You can go to sleep if you want. No, I don't think so. I don't trust you to be honest if it's just the two of us. Sasuke glared. I for one, refuse to lose because I am not buying you 10 bowls. That is expensive. How you're able to pay your rent is beyond me. Even though I eat a lot, I know how to budget, asshole. I'm surprised you can even count higher than 10, moron. Sasuke rolled his eyes. So, are you down or what, Sakura? You ah, uh, ha. Huh. Sakura weakly nodded. Jumping up once more, she pierced the forest canopy, flipping and landing on the highest point. Running a hand across her face, she rubbed her eyes, slapped her cheeks, massaged her temples, anything to get the images out of her head. There was nothing confirmed, nothing that said anything about a secret scandalous relationship between the last Ichiha and the dead last. Slapping herself once more, she focused, leveling her emerald eyes on the two boys who fell back to ground level. They paced one another, saying inaudible words to one another, before bumping fists once again. They didn't move, they didn't even take positions to make a run for it. They stood there, lost in each other's eyes for what felt like hours. Beneath the rising moon, Sakura wanted to puke. I, I am telling Ino everything about tonight. Sakura cursed. T there is just no fucking way. Satsuki cursed. Hersing was putting it lightly. Her mouth running in her mind, with every expletive she could muster. Every word, every insult, every profane vocabulary she had ever heard, used or made up on the spot. Trapped in ice mirrors, surrounded in blinding mist, that girl she and Naruto met in the forest, she was here, hurling Senbon in rapid succession. It was impossible to follow, impossible to dodge, even for her agile body. Gone were the bulky movements of Ichiha Sasuke, all that remained was Ichiha Satsuki, trapped in the heavy, baggy clothes of her male persona. Rolling about the finished section of the stone bridge, she reacted as her body made movements of its own. She kicked out, throwing Naruto back. Despite how stupid it was, despite the senbin digging into her shins, she didn't regret it. Thoughts whirled in her head, chakra burning in her arms and legs. She moved, wincing with every crease and tense of her muscles. She tackled Naruto, and he tackled her. Over and over, everything they did mattered nothing against the Miss Ninja hiding in reflections. Nothing they did mattered when this bitch sped in and out of their vision. As the girl sped past them, Satsuki glared at the afterimage. Naruto was yelling at her, throwing kunai and pulling the needles from his body. He ran out, throwing Satsuki across the arena, her back crashing against an ice mirror. He screamed as the girl crashed against Naruto's back. Needles poked through his clothing and armor sewn into his outerwear. He was weakening by the second. No. Satsuki cursed, pulling needles from her legs. Tripping over herself, she shot ahead. A sensation burned in her head. As the girl prepared her next attack on the two of them, Satsuki realized something. Everything was beginning to slow down. Her steps echoed like rain water dripping and spilling into gutters and puddles. She could see Haku leaving her mirror. Naruto was static, his face empty and demoralized. Satsuki didn't care, throwing herself between the blonde and Haku. Bringing her fist up, she smashed her knuckles into the wooden mask, sending Haku back into her own mirror. Panting, Satsuki turned to Naruto, reaching into her pouch. Pulling out a small wooden container, she slapped into Naruto's hands. G get ready. She whispered. I'll hold her off. W wait. Naruto grabbed her arm. He needed to be quick. As Haku's mask cracked and shattered, the two of them glared at her and her disbelief. Satsuki, I can still fight. I don't have time to apply this. You're going to get hurt idiot. Satsuki shouted back. Satsuki Naruto blinked. Why your eyes? Listen I can see her. I can predict where she's going to go. Satsuki said. But she's skilled. We might need a power up. Naruto paled at the words. W what, no. I don't even know if that's possible. She will kill us both. Satsuki shook her head. She will. If either of us fall I swear that I will complete your dream. If I fall find Itachi. Tell him I couldn't do it. What? Naruto pushed himself off the floor, grabbing handfuls of needles, he winced as he ripped it from his shoulder. I am not doing any of that shit without you. You said it yourself, we're in this together. Sasuke turned to the blonde. Do you trust me? What kind of question is that? Naruto. 
but out of doubt. Then follow my lead. Do what feels natural. Just like we trained. Aku burst from a mirror, her brows furrowed, a sense of discomfort in her chocolate brown eyes. It was quick, but Satsuki was able to catch it. She made a shout and Naruto immediately followed, throwing himself to the ground. Slow motion, after images, things happening before they actually happened. Satsuki Sharingan blared wildly as she moved in to apprehend the Mist Ninja. Throwing her fist out, Haku yelped, at the knuckles cracking against her jaw. Before she could fly back, Naruto jumped up, wrapping his arms around the girl, bending back and slammed her on the stone slabs. Haku spun about, rolling away from Naruto's next body slam. She steadied herself, raising needles and kunai in defense. Before she could disappear into her mirrors, she panicked at the glimmering reflection of ninja wire, wrapped around her arm. She gasped, following the strands as they led directly to Naruto's teeth. Eyes wide, she pulsed her chakra trying to defend herself. There was no way that the two of them were able to figure out her abilities. There was no way that even with some power-up that they were able to see through her movements. Pulling back on the ninja wire, it gave Satsuki enough time to close the distance. To her surprise, Naruto was incredible sturdy, not once moving an inch, and he wasn't even pulling back. To their surprise, Haku did the unthinkable. Taking the kunai of her hand, she sliced through the ninja wire and sunk back into the mirrors. Naruto and Satsuki threw their backs together, eyeing the mirrors as Haku appeared and reappeared, blitzing between each image, never once leaving the confines of her mirrors. Despite everything, despite how annoying her skillset was and how woefully outclassed they were, she was glad that Naruto was still standing beside her. This ends now. Satsuki-chan, Naruto-kun. No fucking way. I should have seen this bullshit coming. Raising her kunai, she prepared herself. I've fought Naruto a million times literally because of his shadow clones. This bitch thinks she's fast, well I'm faster. Naruto. You're right. Neither of us are dying here. None of us. Naruto had a dopey look on his face as they entered the gates of Konoha. Sakura giggled at Kakashi's offhand comment, and Naruto laughed too, but Satsuki, back under the guise of Sasuke, had her hands shoved into her pockets, head lowered and eyes planted to the ground. Something about the whole mission hit her somewhere personal. Her Sharingan had awakened, her chakra control had never been better, and on top of that, their training sessions together had worked. They proved that through brain-dead persistence and having someone to compare yourself to helped in ways wooden training dummies could never. But something irked her. It was almost personal. Red chakra had spilled from Naruto's body. Haku was treated horrendously because of her Keke Genkai and was used and experimented on until Zabuza found her and made her parade as a boy for her protection. The things weren't contrived enough, even when Naruto was on his last leg, he convinced Zabuza and Haku to turn away from their mercenary work, embrace each other beyond master and student, but into father and daughter. Biting her lip, Satsuki lowered her head further. What would life have been if instead of leaving her to suffer, Itachi took her with him? Instead of torturing her, breaking her mind in Tsukiyomi, he pitied and ran away with her to wherever he went, what life would be like, the two of them, brother and sister against the world. Biting her lip, tears watered in her eyes. Haku was just like her. Powerful blood flowed in her veins just as her own, and people just saw a monster or something to examine. Was that the life of powerful people? Was that the life she thought she would ever want? Her thoughts turned away from the darkness creeping at the back of her head. Fists began to clench at the dopey smile, dopey eyes, a blush marking his whiskered cheeks like a red flag. Onyx's eyes narrowed at the blonde as he laughed with Sakura, as if they were the best of friends. The pinkette even looked back at Sasuke, only to immediately drop all joy for a split second and look away. First Haku kisses him, then Sakura wants to be his friend all of a sudden Satsuki wanted to gag. Rolling her eyes, she reached in her pouch and pulled her wool. Naruto, hearing the jingling of coins and the shuffle of Ryo notes, turned to Satsuki. A knowing look in their eyes. She lost fair and square, and it was time to pay up. Wave was a wake-up call for all three of them. Sakura had proven herself somewhat useful and willing to learn. Naruto outpaced her at an astonishing rate, and she now had to learn how to utilize her Sharingan. Shaking her head, she frowned, looking away, a hint of red beginning to form on her cheeks. Haku was all she could see. Clinging to Naruto's arm like the annoying fangirl days of Sakura and Ino. Her stupid brown eyes and stupid black hair. In case we never see each other again I just want you to know that you can do so much better, sister. Tsutsuki sighed as Kakashi gave them a wave and disappeared toward the Hokage Tower. Entering Ichiraku, Tuchi and Am were quick, knowing immediately what Naruto would order. Tsutsuki rested the little satchel of money on the counter and sighed in defeat as Naruto already finished his first bowl. Looking over, Sakura's face was blue with disgust she hadn't even ordered yet. But the palm to Sasuke's face, Tsutsuki sighed in defeat once more. It's not so bad. But God does this annoy the hell out of me. Maybe I am at Sundier. 
Chapter 4. Oh no. Emotions. I'm beginning to think something else is at play here, Sakura. Why you think? Sakura turned to the blonde. Think thereby. I mean, if Sasuke didn't have any reaction to Haku kissing Naruto, then maybe we were wrong about them being gay. At the very least together. Ino hummed as she rested her elbows against the shelf. This is getting complicated. Like, honestly, who would have thought, Naruto and Sasuke would become so close to one another that they faced two missing ninjas on their own, and to think they both had a hand in convincing the two of them to change their ways. I didn't think Sasuke knew any words other than HN, shut up and you're annoying. Neither did I. Sakura shook her head. I can't wrap my head around it. This whole time, he was this eloquent and this verbose. I thought Naruto would be the only one running his mouth, but when Sasuke joined in it threw everyone for a loop. It would be completely in character for Naruto. I I mean, seriously he blew up at the grandson of our client too. He even called him a dipshit. Ino paled, sighing into her hand. There's no way. Yes way. Sakura shook her head. Anyway, after Naruto left, Sasuke got up and didn't say a word and followed after him, almost immediately. Kakashi Sensei was laid out from chakra exhaustion, so I was left alone, terrible vibes all around, and I needed air. I go outside, hear them training, and lo and behold, I find them sitting in a tree. A-I-S-S-I-N-G. Ino asked apprehensively. Why why did you feel the need to do that? Ino shrugged with a nervous chuckle. Uh, I saw an opportunity and took it. But if Naruto wasn't Naruto, I know the two of you would have a great time together being idiots. Ino shrugged again, leaning against bags of fertilizer, I guess. Blondes do have more fun. He that's not the point. Sakura sighed into her hand again. Something is up with them. Ever since wave ended and we've been back to doing menial D ranks with the occasional C rank, we may have gotten closer and started actively training together they are still lost in their own world, Ino. I mean Sasuke literally cooks Naruto dinner every night and they have cheat days together at Ichiraku Raymond. If I didn't have any prior context, I'd say you know what even with context, it still sounds like a date. Ino laughed. Oh god, help me. The yawn ripped and the munching of chips drew their attention away from each other and to the lazy bum dozing off in his seat and the fat body with a bag of chips clutched in his greasy hands. Ino and Sakura glared at the lazy boy who yawned once again. Honestly, I don't know why you two are making such a big deal about it. Shikamaru said, resting his head on his knuckles. I mean, if Naruto and Sasuke do like each other, you should be congratulating them instead of trying to figure out their motives. All of us have different preferences. I want an average woman and an average marriage in the future. Doji wants someone who can cook, their looks and gender, I'm pretty sure, don't really matter. I will admit, whatever Naruto did to convince Sasuke to find him attractive must have been incredible. Either way, it really doesn't concern either of you or me. Aino raised a finger but immediately retracted it. There was something about Shikamaru's change of demeanor that was off-putting. It was as if there was something he knew that she didn't. As much as she wanted to pry, despite how lazy the Nara was, he was good at keeping his secrets, short of mind transfer. Huh. That was actually really insightful, Shika. You made a good point, but the point is me and literally every girl in the academy frowned over him, and I can't just let that fly. I need to know. Closure. My mind is firing off so much, and I really don't want to get my dad involved. Yamanaka. Shikamaru rolled his eyes. Listen. There might be some things that none of us are supposed to know and better yet, shouldn't. There's a reason they keep to themselves and from what I've unwillingly heard, they don't like to really converse with anyone but themselves unless they have to. From what I've been told, they keep to themselves because they understand each other, hardly the kind of reason to assume they're gay. There are plenty shinobi and kinoichi who are close to one another without wanting to bone. What are you trying to say? Sakura asked the boy, a blush growing on her cheeks from his choice of words. Oh, I don't know. If they really are people that you consider comrade and dare say friend, why don't you just ask them? It's like asking if you're gay. Ino screeched. I'm not. Sakura's face went red. T that's not the point. I I can't just ask if they're gay. T that's a breach in privacy. And watching them train and continue to make baseless assumptions isn't. Shikamaru raised a brow. The pinket floundered. Touché. Doji burped and sipped at his soda can. A little laugh escaping his lips. There's an easy solution to this. Me and Shika have known Naruto since before the academy. He's more than happy to talk about his feelings if you just asked. As long as he's in a good mood at least. I don't know, try to ask. You might find what you're looking for. Ino ran a hand across her face. As if the world was coming apart, even Choji put in his two cents. Oh, not you too, Choji. What has happened to this team? Why am I the one who's losing her mind? I mean, I get it. This is a crazy situation. You're in denial. 
Shikimaru suddenly fell off his seat and crashed to the floor, covered in fertilizer. A dizzy look in his eyes, he looked at the blonde cracking her knuckles. Ino's face was red hot, ready to start screaming at the Nara. I in denial with what? Beats me. Shikimaru shrugged. Women are too troublesome to understand anyway. Give it a try. If you two are too afraid to ask, then let us do it. Like Joji said, we've been friends with Naruto since we were kids. Technically, we're still kids, Shikamaru. Choji said through munching chips. Don't talk with your mouth full, Choji. Ino glared. The boy in question blushed and shrunk under her fury. All right, sorry, mom. You little. Shika, will you talk to them? Sakura asked. It's it's really not that important in the grand scheme of things, but God does it make me really question things. Ma, ma, say no more, Sakura. Shikamaru shrugged with a smirk. What are friends for? Just whatever happens, know that you wanted to know. Naruto and Sasuke stood alone in the training grounds. You know, I was actually excited to train with Kakashi-sensei today. Me too. A shame the Hokage keeps calling him away when we need him most. Satsuki frowned. Her seal had dropped an hour before, leaving her in all of her true glory. Speaking of which, we need to find the Hokage and talk to him about this seal. What about it? In wave, it broke and failed twice. Satsuki frowned. If something were to happen during the test, imagine the kind of unnecessary bullshit that would cause. Sakura doesn't know yet, and really I don't think I'm ready for anyone to know. How many people know? Naruto asked. The Hokage, Kakashi, Yusutsuki hummed, closing her eyes for a split second, and Shikamaru. Naruto's eyes bulged from his head. As Shikamaru. How? He just figured it out. Satsuki frowned. Naras are smart, but damn did he catch me off guard that day. It was after a spar that he decided not to be a part of, and when I asked him about it, he dropped the bomb on me. I don't know how, I don't know when, but he had apparently known, or at least suspected since we were eight. Since then, I kinda just talked to him, and he talks to me every once in a blue moon. It's nice, but still unnerving that he saw through me so easily. So he's known the truth for five years. You know how to do basic arithmetic, good job. I'm learning, I'm learning. Naruto raised his hands in defense. But like how? This entire time, everyone thought you were guy. On top of that, I've never seen you two share any conversation outside of HN and Troublesome. I've been wondering about that too for a while now, but we're no longer at the academy. It's not like I can just waltz into their training grounds and ask him a question in front of everyone else. Satsuki glared. Also, it's not like there's much to say to the lazy bum in the academy. You really think he'd be for conversation when he's too busy trying to nap? We talked every once in a while, outside the academy on our free days. Naruto frowned, a tight feeling in his chest began to squeeze the air from his lungs. So what did you two talk about? Uh, whatever came to mind. Satsuki shrugged. For some reason, his dad convinced him to play shogi with me. Anyway Shikamaru and I have been friends in the same sense that we were these last few months before Wave. He's smart, but man does he know how to pry and get answers. You'd think he were Yamanaka. Just nowhere near as loud. Naruto laughed. If he were anything like Ino, I think I'd kill him. Naruto and Satsuki shared a chuckle. The Yuzumaki hummed, turning to the girl. As if a light bulb had turned on in his head. What if I was taught the seal? What? I I mean, what if something happens when we're taking the test? From what you've had me read, there are some parts of the Chunin exams that are more practical than written tests. Naruto said. Like, imagine, we're in the middle of a combat test, we're running off somewhere and suddenly, your seal starts to break. Wouldn't it be a good idea to have someone that can maintain it? Satsuki blinked. Turning back to the blonde she looked at him like he had grown a second head. Huh. T that's actually not a bad idea. Look at you, being clever. Never thought I'd see the day. I mean, yeah that could work. Say, Satsuki. Naruto scratched the back of his head. This is kinda out of nowhere, and I hope I'm not overstepping any bounds myself, but I was wondering if you could tell me about Itachi. The girl snapped, eyes wide at the question. W-Y. The way you've talked about him you don't hate him, do you? Satsuki hesitated. Narrowing her eyes, brows furrowing, she gulped. What brought this on? Call me curious. I she paused. You know how I said that I'm into archery, right? Well, let me tell you about the time I joined him on a hunt for a wild boar. Naruto blinked. The instant she started talking, the words muted in an instant. An empty dark void seeped into one ear and trickled out the other. A different but welcoming sensation wafted over him, watching the Achiha ramble on about something or another. Talking. She was talking. It wasn't like they were going over training and dietary plans, she was just talking about something. It had nothing to do with their skills, nor the seal that she relied on so much. For a moment, the high-pitched voice of Satsuki rang in his ears. She was talking about her brother. 
A memory that suddenly came forth. As she spoke, he watched her face change and shift between emotions. Annoyance. Pride. Anger. Joy. She went on about one of the days they spent together, where she learned how to use a bow against a raging boar. One of her proudest moments, from how she talked about it. Hands up, as she rambled on, they matched her words, showing every moment she did that day. It was hard to explain, the more she talked, the more he saw beyond the kinoichi, he saw her. Onyx's eyes curled into smiles, wind blowing through her long, mid-back-length raven hair, shadows contouring to her thin jaw and thick lips she was incredibly proportionate. He didn't know how to word it right, but he couldn't stop himself. You know Naruto said absent-mindedly. You're actually really beautiful. Satsuki stopped. Her eyes widening by the second. W what? Naruto blinked. Huh? What? As she blinked back. Gulping, the air had turned into something else. T thank you. Huh? The blonde raised a brow. Sure, yeah. What happened after you shot the arrow? Did you get it in one go? Satsuki continued on her story, giving him a sideways glance. As her emotions returned full force, she couldn't get what Naruto said out of her head. It was so simple and yet, so profoundly out of nowhere. If she wasn't in the middle of a good story, she might have flinched from the whiplash. Bombs keep dropping between them, and she was afraid that it was starting to get too personal. Maybe it was her fault for even starting in wave, maybe it was her fault for even going this far for the blonde idiot, but she knew she'd be lying to herself if she said she didn't feel something special about him. I'm not ready for any kind of relationship like that. I'm not even sure if I'm ready for a friendship. She continued on, catching Naruto's glances and responding to his questions and comments. He stood there, listening intently as if every word that came out of her mouth was magical. Does he does he feel that way about me? Do I feel that way about him? No, no. We're just friends. At least I'm able to admit that much. As she finished the story, Naruto's face lit up, as if he were glowing. A flicker in his eyes made her heart jump in her chest. The smirk he always wore made her own lips curl in response. As if temping, she took in a sharp, shaking breath, unable to look away. He was talking, his words flittering in one ear and out the other. He was giving his own input, wildly incorrect, but still, it made her stomach twist with butterflies. Is this what it feels like to feel close to someone? After all this time? All we needed was time and some stupid circumstances. I wonder does he does he even feel the same things? She remembered his words. She remembered how he reacted, but trapped within the ice dome, trapped between herself and Haku, he chose to be her shield. He chose to run in the line of fire, for her. Deal or not, bargain or not, partners or not, he had no reason to put his life on the line like that, yet he did. The girl blinked, listening to his muted words, the laugh and chuckle that followed, to the timid thoughtful look as he scratched his whiskered cheeks. This was the same fool who unleashed blood red chakra to defend her, the same fool who took Senban across his body just to defend her. Under normal circumstances, she might have been offended by his actions. However, were it anyone else, she probably would have been. There was something different that day, the way he moved, the urgency in his voice, the desperation in his breaths, he was afraid. He was terrified. Despite that, he dove head first into fire, for her. He protected her, but it was more than that. Satsuki didn't know if she was overthinking the whole situation, but something about him just clicked in her head. Naruto watched her as the words left his lips few and far in between. She hadn't responded, but she kept a dopey smile on her face as she stared off into nothingness. He didn't know if he had said something, but he wasn't about to break her out of her trance. As he said before, now, emphasized further, she really was beautiful. Her smile despite how little it was, made his heart twist and clench, his stomach flutter and bend. They were standing close to one another, the proximity taking a different meaning now that he noticed it. They were friends. Back in Wave, before Haku and Zabuza changed their ways, they were trapped. From all sides, in every direction, with almost no way to escape, Satsuki reacted in ways he didn't think were possible. He was bleeding and losing consciousness, and that blood-red chakra was messing with his mind. He couldn't focus, he couldn't think, but Satsuki was there. Like the tree-walking exercise, she was there to catch him. She was always there. When his attention was pressed against Haku clones, she was at his back, protecting him with her own body, using everything she had at her disposal to ensure he didn't fall. Naruto gulped, staring at the girl in front of him. He had thought when he first broke into her apartment that was the most vulnerable he had ever seen her, but this, this smile, this soft face, this happy girl in front of him, had never looked so serene, so peaceful. She was vulnerable. It had been a month since Wave and this was the first day they've had time to really hang out and do something other than mindless training. Sakura was gone to probably gossip with Ino, and Kakashi-sensei had once again been called up by the Hokage. Alone, in this training ground beneath the midsummer sun, they had grown even closer. 
even he could admit it despite his somewhat tactless mind. She had chosen to be here with him, she had chosen to stay by his side, and that was enough to make his smile spread. He loved Shikamaru and Choji, but they had their own lives. They had their own friends, and he wasn't going to be selfish enough to try and take up their time. Satsuki, however, their bond went deeper than that. Their bond was indescribable to the Yuzumaki. From the first time he saw her in her true form, to the moment their knuckles first touched as if a switch had been flipped, something clicked in his head. He didn't want to be away from her. She didn't want him to leave. He didn't want to see her fall. She wanted to be there to catch him. Their thoughts whirling. It had been four months since they first truly met. Yet, despite all the knuckle bumps, all the blood, sweat and tears they had shed, it was odd. As they looked at one another, finding it harder and harder to find the right words to say, it was the first time that they really examined one another. She told herself, focusing her gaze on him. The idiot will get himself killed if someone doesn't keep up with him. Naruto softened, eyes matching her own. The asshole is gonna get herself killed if there isn't someone there to pull her back. It doesn't matter if it's too fast. It doesn't matter if we barely know each other. She needs a friend. He needs someone to keep him on the right path. I want to be that person. I want to be that person. Naruto. She said suddenly. Her smile never leaving her face. Something interesting just occurred to me. Why don't we find one of the other sensei for help since Kakashi is too busy today? What for? Ninjutsu, Jinjutsu, Tujutsu. Satsuki said. It can't hurt to learn some other techniques while our own teacher is away. What do you say? That doesn't sound too bad. Naruto smiled. Let's do it. Who do we go to first? Asuma is a Saratobi, and that means really good with ninjutsu. We could probably learn our elemental affinities. Right, you have fire, since you're an Ichiha. I've been wondering what mine would be. Naruto hummed. No time like the present. She shrugged. However, as they prepared to move, grass shuffled. Satsuki immediately poured chakra into the seal. Her face shifted, hair shortened and her clothes filled out. Sasuke blinked and shook his head, the smile and the joy vanishing from his face in the instant the transformation had finished. They turned to the street, staring at the pair of silhouettes walking toward them. Boy, Naruto, Satsuki. Shikamaru's voice came. The two of them blinked. Speak of the devil. The two of them sighed in relief, but Satsuki kept her transformation up. Shikamaru. What did I say about using my name? The boy shrugged. It's your name. I'm going to use it. Where are you even hiding, the three of us know what you really look like. Sasuke glared. For someone so lazy, you know how to ask too many questions. This is why you're troublesome. Shikamaru sighed. No matter the gender, you're still a pain in the ass. Naruto raised a brow at the two. Sasuke crossed his arms and sighed. Anyway, where is your sensei? We need to talk to him about something. Huh, your sensei is gone too. Oh. Sasuke flinched with shock. I wonder where he could be. Is he with the Hokage? Yeah, he said that there was some kind of meeting he needed to go to. Said it wouldn't be long, but it's been a few hours already. Well, since our sensei are nowhere to be found, want some ramen. It's not cheat day yet. Satsuki glared. Besides, I wanted to cook something new for lunch. Be but Sasuke, Naruto turned to him. Please. Shikamaru looked at the two for a moment. Something churning in that ever aware mind of his. Crossing his arms, if there was something he knew about women, was that if they ever got their mind set on something, they'd do everything in their power to make it happen. A diet was foolish for people of their status, what they really needed was proper portioning, not diets. Hmm. I remember Satsuki telling me about that one day. Why don't you cook for us all, Satsuki? Nothing beats a home-cooked meal, right? The girl gave Shikamaru an inquisitive look through Sasuke. What what is this fool doing? Hmm, yeah. I was actually going to go hunting for duck. Roasted duck with bok choy and garlic fried rice, sounds absolutely delicious. Before Naruto or Shikamaru could back out, Choji's stomach roared. All heads turned to the boy as he tried to hide his blushing face. Sasuke smirked, a chuckle leaving his mouth. Look at that, Naruto, Choji likes the idea. And since you brought it up, you're staying to eat. Sasuke may have let Satsuki slip through the seal. Shikamaru paled and shrunk under his glare but nodded anyway, muttering the same word as he always did. Naruto couldn't stop smiling. However, there was something off in his chest. Something that just wouldn't leave him alone. It hurt watching Shikamaru and Satsuki talk. It was as if there was a whole different world that he had been oblivious to. What's up old man? Naruto smiled, his hands rising to the back of his head. However, before he could, Satsuki smashed her fist into his skull, sending him to the floor. Show the Hokage some respect, dipshit. Ma, ma, Satsuki. Naruto cringed, clutching his head for dear life. Haha. <laughs> the two of them turned to the old man sitting in his chair, giggling up a storm. 
Choking on his pipe, he set it aside, wiping a tear from his eye. The two of you are reminding me of my student so much. It's a bit of nostalgia for this old man. Okajama. Satsuki bowed to the man. Dear child, you don't have to do that when it's just us in this room. Hiruzen smiled. Come, take a seat, what can I do for you too? I was surprised to hear that Kakashi-kun has nominated your team for the Chunin exams. I guess congratulations are in order. Of course. Naruto jammed his thumb into his hit I-8. Watch out, old man, I'm about to come and take that hat from you. Ha. Hiruzen chuckled. All in due time, Naruto-kun. Okajama. Satsuki said. Naruto and I have been training together for a long time since we've become genin. For some reason, my seal is weakening and it's getting harder and harder to maintain the transformation. You know I'm not ready yet. Maybe it's for the best. Hiruzen asked. Maybe that is your body telling you that you can't hide who you are anymore. Regardless, it's still my choice. I can't I am not ready. Satsuki frowned. We've done research into what the Chunin exams might entail and there's a practical mission involved in one of the levels. I don't want my seal breaking mid-test, so can you teach me and Naruto how to do the seal? Hiruzen expected many things from this conversation the moment the two of them walked through his door. Especially when her seal was deactivated before the door even closed. This, however, was not what he expected. A pair of genin, talented and persistent, a dangerous pair. For a moment, it reminded him of Minato and Kishina, a wistful glance given to the blonde man's picture on the wall. He blinked and sighed in his seat, lifting his pipe to his lips. You know old man, that pipe's gonna kill you one day. I've been smoking since before you were a sperm cell, Naruto-kun. I think I'll be fine. Hiruzen chuckled. This is a strange request, Satsuki-chan. But one that I can definitely approve. However, there is a man that I think would be better suited for such a task. At the moment he is a bit busy out in the field. If it truly is failing, you will need a seal master to work on it, and sadly, Fuinjutsu is something I never managed to learn. Naruto and Satsuki frowned. But I can teach you the basic infrastructure of the seal. Hiruzen stood. With a flash of his hand seals, the door locked and the walls were covered in glowing seals. Calligraphy spread up and down, merging and colliding until it looked like graffiti scrawled across the Hokage's office. Now, Satsuki-chan, can you show us the seal? Moving in her chair, she moved her hair, lifting it and letting the rest flutter over her left shoulder. The Hokage made a quick motion, bringing Naruto's attention. There were footsteps and before she knew it, eyes placed at the back of her neck. The seal was warm, humming with chakra, but it was waning by the second. Even as she pushed chakra into the lines of ink, it wasn't enough to activate its properties. Whoa. Naruto whispered. Lifting his shirt, he channeled chakra, revealing the black seal stretching across his belly. Aye it's. Yes, Naruto-kun. This is Fuinjutsu, the art of seals. The Hokage hummed. The seal you have is called the Shaiki Fuin. It is one of the most powerful techniques, if not the most. The one Satsuki-chan has is a far cry from the Shaiki Fuin, however, and is relatively simple to those with intermediate knowledge of Fuinjutsu. The old man hummed, looking at the calligraphy. Most of the strokes were correct, at least from what he could see. But, there was one, the same one that despite redrawing the calligraphy, was still causing the failures within the seal. She shouldn't be forced out of the seal, even without applied chakra, and yet, she still was. Hiruzen took out a brush and some ink. Naruto watched carefully as the old man dabbed the hairs through the black liquid. Careful and practiced, Hiruzen struck the brush across Atsuki's skin, covering the broken seal with a new calligraphy. She groaned as her chakra was suddenly siphoned toward the seal. It hummed and glowed a golden light before vanishing like an exhale. Satsuki hummed, nodding her head at the old man. Her features did not change. Giving Naruto a nod, she channeled her chakra, forcing it through the seal. Almost immediately, her face filled out, her jawline widened slightly, and her hair shortened back into the duck butt that Sasuke wore so proudly. Satsuki-chan, Naruto-kun, take this scroll and give it to the librarian of the Jutsu library downstairs. She will understand and give you an entry-level scroll on sealing. Hiruzen hummed. It would seem that the time has come to allow the both of you to learn more about yourselves. What are you talking about? Naruto raised a brow. Your parents, Naruto-kun. And for you, Satsuki-chan, if your skills are of any merit from what I've been led to believe your time to find your brother is coming. He said. And some truths that concern you. Both of you, do your absolute best during the exams. I want to be able to tell you everything now, but I cannot do it unless I know for certain that you two can handle it. Do you promise? Yes, Hokage-sama. Satsuki bowed. I won't let you down. You could never, Satsuki-chan. Hiruzen patted her head. Looking to Naruto, however, the blonde boy was silent, eyes planted to the floor. The mention of his parents for sure must have gotten him in that slump. 
the frown, the tears building in his eyes and the downward crease of his whisker cheeks, told him everything he needed to know. There is something I could tell you, Naruto-kun. Your mother and your mother, Satsuki-chan, were close friends. The best of friends even. Your fathers were close friends as well. Naruto and Satsuki flinched, looking at the man with hope and surprise. Satsuki shook her head. Ah really? My father never had friends. When Naruto-kun's parents died, it was the final straw for your father, Satsuki-chan. There was once a time where he smiled as bright as the sun. He chose to have no more friends, he couldn't handle the pain any longer. Hiruzen said solemnly. Now get going. I have high hopes for the two of you. Good luck. Genin. So many Genin. Sasuke, Naruto and Sakura tensed at the sheer number of shinobi. There had to be well over 200 of them gathered in the tight confines of the room. There were Konoha Genin that he had never seen before, and there were several teams of sand shinobi, judging by their hit I-8. There were others, wearing pale blue and grey clothing with hit I-8 of the hidden mist. Mist? Naruto asked. You don't think Sakura turned to Sasuke and Naruto? Is she here? Sasuke asked no one in particular. As if the gods heard his question, out from a gaggle of genin, a girl with curled hair and lipstick burst into the scene. She was short compared to her teammates. But, the blush growing on Naruto's face and the glitter in Sakura's eyes told Sasuke everything he needed to know. Naruto-kun. Sakura-san. Sasuke-san. A pleasure to see you three after so long. Haku. Naruto suddenly cheered running to the girl. They quickly embraced one another, the blonde boy lifting her up and spinning her around. Sasuke glared, unable to contain his anger. She tried killing us both, moron. Just because we all came to agreements doesn't change that fact. I missed you, Naruto-kun. Haku smiled, pressing her forehead to his. The boy in question followed suit, smirking and laughing like a giddy child in a candy shop. So much has happened since we parted ways in wave. Ino leaned in, nudging Sasuke and Sakura. So that's the ice mistress you were talking about. Yeah, so what? She's whatever. Sasuke huffed, shoving his hands into his pockets. But that wasn't what I asked. Ino raised a brow at Sasuke's outburst. Shikamaru and Choji shared a knowing glance. What's with the aggression? Satsuki, for all her poise and self-control, paled at Ino's remark. Snapping out of her surprise, she made her usual grunt and walked away to find a bench to sit. She tried her hardest to maintain her stoic expression, but the longer Naruto and Haku laughed and talked to one another, as if they were the best of friends simply aggravated her further. For no reason in particular either. Look at her. Satsuki hissed through her Sasuke guys. Flaunting her face and her stupid perfume all over the place. I don't get it. What's so great about her anyway? Haku introduced Naruto and Sakura to her teammates, a boy with glasses and another boy with greenish hair and large palm strapped to his back. As Naruto gawked at the swords they carried and the strength he could somehow sense, he flipped about, gasping like a child. Her glare would not dissipate. In her blind rage, Shikamaru took a seat beside her, his head leaned into his clasped hands. What's gotten into you, Satsuki? I already told you, my name is Sasuke. She glared at him. Yeah, yeah. Shikamaru hummed. You still didn't answer my Narino's question. What's the deal with you? What makes you think there's something wrong with me? I hear things. Shikamaru gave her a dead glance. All of it unwillingly, but I hear it anyway. Some things happened in wave that not even Naruto wants to talk about, unless it's that kiss she gave him. Of course, the idiot would talk about the kiss. Sasuke growled. Shikamaru huffed. I'm smart as hell, a curse all Nara have, unfortunately. Say what you will, deny what you will, but it looks like you're jealous. Jealous? Satsuki scoffed at the notion. Hardly. Uh huh. Shikamaru drawled. I don't know if you're trying to convince me or yourself. Is this is this payback for me beating you at shogi? Satsuki slapped her hands into her knees, hissing at the Nara. Is that why you're bothering me with you baseless theories? 1. You got lucky. 2. It's hardly baseless. I want to punch you. I hope you know that. Wait in line, princess. Don't call me that. Whatever. Shikamaru sighed. Standing up, he patted his legs. As he walked away, he turned to Sasuke with a smirk that spelled chaos. Either way, instead of being a prick, maybe go up there and stop your man from making out with another woman. Satsuki, once more, for all her poise and self-control, nearly snapped. You know what, brother I think I'm starting to understand what hate is. I mean this from the bottom of my heart. Fuck you, Shikamaru. Seconds. Minutes. Hours. Alone in the darkness of the winding forest of death, they had found themselves deep in the belly of the beast. Sakura had collapsed, puking on a tree branch. Satsuki couldn't control her body either. So enraptured with fear, she fell back unable to even throw herself in front of Sakura. Despite all their training, despite everything they had done to better themselves for this test, something wrong was happening. 
something terribly wrong. This person, whoever they were, were definitely not Jenin and definitely not from any village. They were too powerful, too quick and somehow survived every powerful technique she had in her arsenal. Sakura had stopped gagging, so that was something good. Satsuki mustered what little courage she had left and grabbed Sakura. Sasuke. She cried out. W what do we do? I don't know, but we have to get away from that bastard, now. Dropping Sakura, the girl quickly caught on and jumped through the trees after the Achea. They zipped and dashed, dodging and weaving between branches and trees. However, no matter where they went, no matter how much chakra they infused with their legs, they could only go so far. Whoever this person was, they were persistent and damn they were fast. Sharingan active, Satsuki, as Sasuke, did the unthinkable and pushed Sakura. Her footing lost, she fell off her tree branch, eyes wide and heart shattering with every second she descended. Throwing a kunai out, some ninja wire was attached. As the blade stuck itself into a tree, she swung about until she was able to reposition. Eyebrows furrowed, she focused, watching as their pursuer completely ignored her presence and chased after Sasuke with blinding efficiency. D this can't be happening. She gasped weakly. I know I know I'm not the strongest, but Sasuke is my teammate. Naruto where are you? As Sasuke cursed under his breath, the boy slid back, hands speeding through hand signs. Katen. Nkakak no jutsu. Her chest expanded and quickly tightened, spewing forth a massive fireball. It hurtled across the forest, smashing against the genin clothes on her behind. Before she could react, from the smoke and flame, a giant snake rushed out toward her, its scales blackened with ash and soot. Sasuke gulped, raising his kunai, eyes as wide as plates. Before the snake could close the distance, a fist smashed into its nose, sending the snake hurtling into a tree, throwing its rider into the deep woods. A blur of orange and red chakra, Satsuki watched as Naruto beat the creature into the tree trunk with reckless abandon and unbelievable strength. He was bellowing with fury, roaring with rage. Leave her alone. Crimson chakra gathered in his fist. Satsuki blinked, raising her arms in defense. Winds rose, picking up and gathering to Naruto's clenched hand, compressing around his knuckles. As the red chakra began to engulf his body, he brought down his knuckles, shattering through snake scales and flesh, until it couldn't take any more damage and popped into a wall of smoke. Before he could descend, he shot back, using the tree as a springboard, and landed in front of Satsuki, with the grace of an experienced ninja. She couldn't speak. His arms had already wrapped around her, holding her tight in his embrace. I'm so sorry. Naruto panted into her shoulder. I that thing did something to my seal. I don't know what it was, but I was able to break though it after reading the scroll we got from the library. Satsuki. God damn it, Naruto. She shouted back, her own arms finally moving at her command. She buried her face into his neck, panting and almost panicking. W where the fuck were you? I'm sorry. We won't get separated again. I promise. Where's Sakura? I figured whoever that was, was after me. And it turns out I was right. Satsuki shook her head. I saw her use ninja wire and get the fuck out of dodge. I don't know where she is but at least I know she's safe. She doesn't even have a scroll. Okay, first order of business, we find her and reposition. Naruto said. I don't know where you sent that freak, but I have a feeling that they'll be after us again. Let's hope that won't be for a while. Knowing our bullshit luck. Hey. The two of them snapped, jumping and screaming, their kunai raised and ninjutsu primed. Turning back, the two of them were met with a cold breeze and watery air. Three Miss Ninjas stood behind them, holding Sakura in their arms. Releasing her, the Pinket shot forward. Wiping the sweat from their brows, they fell on the branches Sakura tackled them to floor. I, I thought Sakura whimpered as the tears trickled down her cheeks. I. We're here, Sakura-chan. Naruto whispered back, still panting and weak. Some freak isn't going to kill me. Not here. Sasuke responded with the same tone. Breathless, he leaned into her touch as did Naruto. I'm sorry for pushing you away. Next time, warn me. Haku Naruto smiled. How the hell did you find us? Igura sensed you guys. Haku pointed at the green-haired boy. He gave them a simple nod. Something was off and we heard all the explosions. That was quite the show, Sasuke-san. I didn't think you knew that many powerful ninjutsu. Satsuki, despite how tired she was, chuckled in defeat. Honestly, neither did I. So, what now? We have extra scrolls if you want some. Haku said. Whoever that was, I think we should get moving, ASAP. Are right behind you. Naruto nodded. Come on guys, we're burning daylight. I want to be out of this damn forest as quickly as possible. Whoever that was is on their way. Yugura said, twirling his palm. It, it's a massive chakra signature. There's no way that's a genin. We have to let the test proctors know. Your father will lose his mind if you were hurt, Hakusama. Zabuza. Yes, my father is the husband of the new Mizukage. Haku said. 
She turned her attention to Sasuke as they all burst forward toward the center of the forest of death. That's not important right now. What's their deal and why do they want you so badly, Sasuke? It's me. Sasuke said. We're just as confused as you are. We were ready to head out and before we knew it, this psychopath comes out and starts attacking us. You. Sakura corrected. They started attacking you. The only reason Naruto and I got hurt was because we were in the way. I'm sorry but it's the truth. Either way, we're not letting that freak get their hands on you. I don't care if I am still weak you're my teammate and my friend. I can't let them hurt you. This isn't about the scrolls of heaven and earth anymore, this person wants you dead. Sakura-chan is right, Sasuke. Naruto gave him a nod. If they want you dead, they'll have to go through us as long as we can still stand. Tsutsuki stared at them. She didn't know what to say. As if a weight had been lifted off her back, a newfound respect and admiration was directed at Sakura. In their direst moment, she knew how to grow a spine, and her confidence, despite her crippling fear, was inspiring. Tsutsuki never thought she'd see the day. Good thing we're here too. Haku said. Chijuro and Yugura are incredible fighters. When we get to the end of this arena, I'm going to have a word with my mother and father. The test has been infiltrated by someone parading as a genin and has targeted a Kanoha shinobi. Even though we have no reason to help, I don't think my mom and dad are really gonna mind. Titan formation. Yugura suddenly shouted. Sasuke and get between us now. Without warning, Naruto suddenly grabbed the Achiha and threw him to Haku. Sakura followed suit and Naruto planted himself against a tree branch. Jumping to his side, Haku threw up a mirror of ice. Sasuke could only watch as another snake, just as large as the first one, shattered Haku's mirror with ease, sending her and Naruto in different directions. As the snake closed the distance, Yugura shot forward, slamming his polarm into the snake's nostrils. The Satsuki surprise, Coral sprang to life around its face and every point of impact that Yugura made. The snake hissed and screeched, falling back toward another tree. Chijuro went in next, lifting his giant bandaged sword and swung for the snake's unprotected underbelly. Thakra extended outward, almost bathing the weapon in flames, sliced through the snake, beheading it before it popped into smoke. No, it's not enough. Sasuke sped through hand signs. It's not enough. The rider. Take down the rider. Pain. Ryukan no jutsu. Fire roared outward, springing in every direction. Smashing against trees and branches, a silhouette danced and weaved, dodging every attack she sent their way. Sakura followed suit, throwing kunai and shuriken, further surprising the Achea. Her shuriken jutsu was not bad and was actually quite accurate. The shadow in the smoke and flame had to stop to change directions and deflect. The tree suddenly snapped. The two of them looked down to the forest floor. A giant log suddenly flew up into the sky, smashing against the silhouette, flattening it in a shower of splinters and forest dust. Before they could say anything, a boulder, another log, another boulder, giant objects from the forest floor flew into the air and crashed where the silhouette was last seen. Wind pulsing once more, Satsuki watched as Naruto flipped through the air and landed on the branch, panting and eyes blood red with rage. Neither Satsuki or Sakura said a word. Planted with surprise as the Yuzumaki roared and growled, almost frothing at the mouth. His fingernails were extended, his chakra exuded with crimson color. Leave them alone. Then Naruto? Sakura asked timidly. Leave them alone. Springing forward, Naruto charged at the pile of debris. Explosions, earth-shaking punches, Satsuki paled by the second as she watched him punch through stone with his bare hands. Still reeling from it all, Haku suddenly appeared, bellowing commands to her teammates. Chijuro, grab Sasuke and Sakura, get to the center of the forest. Take the scrolls with you. I'll join you three in a bit. Yugura, you and I are going to help Naruto, right now. Yes, Haku-sama. Yugura nodded. Do I have permission to use him? Yes. But wait until they are out of range. Use only one tail at the max. As you command. Tsutsuki caught the last bit. Her eyes widening once again. He's a Jinchuriki like Naruto. I see. As they disappeared, Yugura took a deep breath. Red chakra bubbling around his body, he and Haku jumped down to the forest floor. Rolling about the shrubs and debris, they readied themselves. Naruto was hissing, growling and twitching like a wild animal. His body now completely submerged in red chakra. Yugura stood beside him, surprising Naruto for a second. You two? He asked. Three. And nine. Naruto stuttered. That person is still alive. Yugura frowned. Whatever you did, it wasn't enough. I'm starting to think nothing is going to be enough. Naruto hissed. I'm getting real tired of hitting this guy with everything I have to give and still have no effect on him. Haha. <laughs> a creepy laugh emanated through the smoke. My, Naruto-kun you really are something else. Tell me, how does it feel knowing that no matter what you do, I will still get my hands on your dear Sasuke? H how the hell do you know my name, bastard? 
You can try, but we won't let you. Haku said with a glare. I don't think I know who you are. The silhouette said with a bored tone. I am Mamachi Haku, daughter of the fifth Mizukage, Mamachi Mei. The ice mistress declared. Try me. I wasn't aware of a fifth Mizukage. Clearly you're out of the loop. Yugura bellowed. Step out of the shadows coward. If you want me, you can come get me. All heads snapped up toward the forest canopy. A trio descended from the branch, landing gracefully on the forest floor below. Haku, Naruto and Yugura fought the urge to face Palm right then and there. Sakura was angry, Chijuro was blushing with embarrassment, and Sasuke, for some godforsaken reason, was leading their little trio as if he could take on the world. What? The? Fuck. Satsuki. What are you doing? Naruto. She said, drawing his attention to her. Satsuki took a deep breath, focusing her onyx gaze on him and him alone. I told you we're fighting together. Really? Naruto's face dropped. Now you're going to do that talk now. Your life is in danger and you're just willing to waltz right back. I am a Kushinobi of Konoha. Even if my life is in danger, I'm not running from a fight. Sakura-chan, knock some sense into him. Honestly, I'm with him. She said, crossing her arms. I am a Kanoichi. I am a ninja. I'm not going to hide and run away when my comrades are in danger. Or the voice in the shadows said. Are you serious right now? As adorable as this is, this is hardly the time and place for this conversation. Hey. Naruto snapped, pointing at the shadows. Shut the fuck up. This doesn't concern you. Alright, if you want to have your conversation, I'll just do what I came here for. Thank you, Sasuke-kun, I admire your confidence, even if it was for stupid reasons. Your pair of Jinchuriki and your missed friends were certainly not part of the plan, but needless to say, it was in the end, for nothing. I am done playing with you brats. As the person stepped from the shade of the tree, they froze in place. As if trapped in their own body, they trembled and shook, trying to fight back. To Naruto and Haku's surprise, black shadows, darker than any night, came together, wrapping around the person. His heart began to race, Naruto snapped his head back to Sasuke and Sakura, both of whom were smiling. It all finally clicked together when the battle cry was heard. What if neglected female Sasuke kidnaps Naruto, and thanks for watching my video till the end if you enjoy this content, then do consider subscribing to my channel, and leave a like if you guys need the next part, comment down, and thanks for watching the video and see you guys in the next video.